pretty good. Yes. It's pretty serious. There you go. Music fades into the background as we go into session one of season one of phase three of the storyline. Uh, or uh, session number 90 for those who have been playing the story nonstop. <laughs> so it has been a while that they've been doing it and 184 sessions since they started the storyline of the Wrath of the Immortals. So this one's had quite a few, and then there are two other groups that are into their 90s of sessions. So yeah. all three of those add together to be the one story. Okay. So they hear about what the other people get up to, and the other people hear what these, these guys get up to. Mm. And that as they're all around the same time period, it does make an interesting story. Mm. Just that they can't interact with the other characters, because they're not there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what has uh, happened in the storyline is War got declared... Because they're the heroes. <laughs> well, whoever session it is, is the heroes. Mm. So okay. you, you don't really want to have uh, an NPC from another game outshine the current players. Yeah. Well, I'm like Dimitri. And they have heard of Dimitri in the other stories. Mm. Sure they have. <laughs> and so... What they had heard was that a great war had been declared between uh, three nations. Uh, none of them are at each other. So right. <laughs> the uh, nation of um, uh, probably the biggest uh, empire of mages in the world has declared mm. war on the small nation of Galantry on that map. Mm. Uh, if I bring the map up, it will help. Who are also quite significantly strong in magic. Uh, but they are quite significantly They're strong strongly. in magic, but it's like if you compare a province of Galantry, um, it has 13 princes, and mm. one province is quite powerful in its own right, but it couldn't stand up to the entire nation by itself. Yeah. Um, you sort of consider um, Alphatia to think of um, the entire region there as a province of Alphatia, it's that big. So uh, it, it has a council of a thousand wizards who have decided not to quest for immortality. Hmm. But they're all in the 30 levels. So they're all uh, high in epic levels. Hmm. And uh, the nation was founded by people who came to this plane from another world where they had ripped their plane asunder in a dispute. As you do. <laughs> Which is better, fire or air? That's the dispute that destroyed their world. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've seen, I've seen the Avatar Last Airbender fan, and I, it's, it's something to... <laughs> and uh, this was before the Airbender came out, and it's actually no. quite funny that they are in the same concept. <laughs> so the Alphatians were founded by the uh, people of air, mm -hmm. uh, because the people of fire pretty much burnt their world apart and in their entire plane of existence was ripped apart mm. and the people of fire settled in Galantry mm. and uh, their descendants have merged of their plane with the rest of the people which is how everyone has elemental aspects because mm. they were elemental beings and they've all become more mortal than elemental mm. um, the other nation that has declared war is the Thyatan Empire the nation that built every other nation. So you know how uh, the British went around and formed little nations oh. everywhere? They're very much... They, they are based on the Romans, but they're so very British in personality. Also, oh no. 
And so every nation in the region there was pretty much turned into a, a, a nation in its own right by these guys. Hmm. Uh, and then threw them off. Hmm. Uh, whereas they turned themselves into an empire by kicking the Alphatian Empire out of this region. And that was a thousand years ago, hmm. roughly. So the timing of the setting is based around when the Thyatans kicked out the Alphatians. And because of that, there's been a rivalry between them like a cold war. And because the Alphatians declared war on Galantry and have to come through Thyatan territory, the Thyatans declared war on Alphatia. Hmm. And to throw Spanner in the loop, um, there's a nation above the um, uh, Mongolian horse lords called the Haldenic territories. They'd also decided to declare war on the Alphatian Empire to everyone's surprise. Because they're not affiliated with any of the other nations involved, but they've declared war on this big thing. Turns out that they're technically also um, under the uh, we must exterminate you and, delete and remove everyone um, who has any memory of this region. It's, it, it does make a horrific um, war when it's... Uh, it's essentially the, every country ganging up on one like region. Yeah, and while the uh, the Alphatia nation is really a superpower and mm. everyone else is a minor power. So the Thyatans is the next biggest, uh, Thyatan Empire is the next biggest country and he could not stand it should not have been able to stand up against the Alphatian Empire by itself until the party burnt down the Alphatian airship Armada. Hmm. They had enough airships that they could take out any nation without um, chance of recovery or um, retaliation. Just fly above them and stop and just drop um, magic and uh, crap on top of them from the air until there's nothing left. That was their plan. Uh, of course, we did find out later that Alphatia may not be entirely the bad guys. They've got the capability to smash everyone, but they may be justified in their actions. Yeah. But their, their actions are pretty much destroying everything you know. So the uh, reason that they, they found out that they're doing this is if they don't do this, then magic will be drained from the world and all magical creatures, including people like pixies, will die. <laughs> well, rip to me, I guess. <laughs> So, okay. does that apply to everyone else? Yeah, it does apply to everyone else. Every magical creature, every um, spellcaster will um, be uh, bereft of magic. And the setting Sorry. will uh, become very mundane after that. That's, that's bad news. Well, a bit, a bit of an echo of the fact that while uh, Elvation actions is exceptionally bad news for us like our homeland, the area of the so-called known world, because they're gonna, they, they want to wipe it from the map. The actual area of the known world is relatively small part of the globe, mm -hmm. and as I say, if they wipe out all of the known world, then the rest of the globe and the rest of magic and all magic creatures can technically be saved. So that region is probably close to the size of um, England plus a couple of um, countries of Europe. Mm. Not much more than that. Okay. So it's a very tiny spot on the globe. But obviously it's a very important spot. Because that's where everyone's from. <laughs> where we live. <laughs> and... But that the fact that they may not entirely be the bad guys. <laughs> and so they're, they're, they're dealing with this as a, as a major problem with the... Uh, uh, big forces coming from the master heading in from the west of the region uh, has basically started invading uh, he is bringing a wall of death with him anyone who crosses that wall dies and joins his forces mm -hmm. willingly or not okay and uh, he alive or not alive or not yes and he is powering most of his equipment with the souls of those he takes. Great. <laughs> and so he's probably a bad guy. <laughs> and the um, parties have been tasked with holding him at bay because the owls are currently draining their trees of life of all their power so they can move them. Hmm. 
because if they kill off their trees before he reaches it, he can't win. And if the master breaks through the um, party lines, then there's a good chance the story will end there. Oh. Oh no. Because once all the elves die, um, a big chunk of what they're going to do falls apart. They've also been told by their time-traveling friend Drezzle that if the nation that they're working for, Darakin, falls, everyone falls. Mm. No one comes out alive. <laughs> and as Durakin is the base of where everyone's set up, they have more incentive to stay here and keep everything working and alive and yeah. trying to do what's best for the country. They've also got specialists trying to find out where this device that everyone's arguing over is found. Because if anyone who knows about its existence crosses into Galantry, they have an hour left before the gods smite them. No matter where you go afterwards, the moment you step over that border, they know where you are, who you are, and will come after you no matter where you go. Because hmm. they don't want anyone to have that knowledge, but they're only checking in that one small area. <laughs> they can't globally check. Hmm. And which of the three factions will smite you is unknown because each of them doesn't want it to get out for their own reasons. Fair enough. One of them might just want the information from you and is not going to ask nicely. And uh, so with all that, we have uh, online Jeremy. Hey, good evening all. Uh, I'm playing Dimitri Dimitrov, the uh, uh, Kaldaran, uh, human Kaldaran, who uh, grew up as a sort of humble peasant stock and it's obviously never forgotten his humble origins, and as such, he is merely out to having stepped above his feet in the peasant stock that he came from. He, he does stop, just basically want to spread wisdom and guidance for the world, ensure that those, everyone around, can gain benefit from his knowledge and understanding and research that he's done. Well, of course, everyone deserves to get their understanding from you. <laughs> I need to know the right things. <laughs> and then we have Martin online. Uh, so I'm currently in Canberra for an MRI. So, um, oh, yeah. So, um, but I need to be back in um, Sydney on Friday in order to see the Swans versus Carlton. Important things, yes. Of course, That's it's true. very important. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, a good time um, to be alive. And um, so I'm playing an elven monk. Um, the um, monk's speci um, is the um, path of the Kenzai. Um, so it's featured in the um, uh, Xenophar's Guide to Everything. And... Mm. Um, I like it. Um, <laughs> and don't worry, he was a halfling, but he got better. Okay, or taller. Uh, or taller. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my um, wish when I um, graduated from uh, the underworld or well, whatever it was called. Hello, world. When, 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 he, when he accompanied Dimitri while Dimitri saved all the gods. <laughs> I'll, I'll He's got a wish. Slant on that. But, um, I'm, I'm not interested in correcting Dimitri. Um, it just, uh, just doesn't um, take. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, my background is an urchin. Um, and as stated, Previously, I've got something called Fire 2. I don't know what it is. You'll find um, out later. But um, I'll find out. Sounds hot. They'll basically be able to do the equivalent <laughs> of um, fire bending stuff. Hmm. Yes. Cool. So when you have an element uh, affiliation, the stronger your affiliation with that element, the more powerful you get with it. Whereas the more you spread out, the more uh, balanced you become. Hmm. Yeah. There's a trade-off though. Everything is uh, 
based on what you want to do. And as the characters have a chance to reach level 30, they can do quite a few things. Um, so I think I will be in the front line, given yeah. that you're um, Rose. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I'll, I'll be in the front line. I, I do have a flame tongue blade, so I'm, I am not too bad in... Uh, um, in uh, close, but I do tend to jump out again. Just to be you've got the point of your meat shield, I mean, sorry, I can have it. Well, that does help that you're going to be on the water, so that will help. Oh, yes, I can run on water. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so then uh, um, Izzy can introduce herself and her character. Uh, yep, I am Izzy. I am playing Rain Ginko, who is a arcane trickster rogue and a pixie. Uh, do I give some backstory as well? Give some well, backstory of how you'd like them to know you? Uh, well, I already forgot the name of the place where she's from. Wendell. Wendell? Wendell. W E N D A R. They keep things spelled fairly simple, and I try to phonetically say them so I can actually uh, <laughs> remember them. Well, well, I notice you've got um, one spelling on one sheet and another spelling on. <laughs> the Happens other a lot. Sheet, so. <laughs> That's why I say I try to phonetically write it and do it. Otherwise, they come out with really weird um, differences. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Rain is from from Wanda, and despite that, she has an interest in technology which naturally kind of got her in a lot of trouble um and as a result she is a failed merchant because again as you would assume being from a nation that hates technology while well, you like technology is um going to put a it's it your way up. yeah um she's more and as a result she kind of just ended up traveling around becoming a ro rogue down the line to, you know, not die. And now she's... And you found yourself amongst a group of people who actually look for technology not to destroy it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a nice change of pace for her. And uh, why are you suspicious of the elf with you? Because all elves are supposedly anti-tech. Um, once you learn out he was actually a halfling who got better, yeah. um, it makes it a bit easier. <laughs> yeah. As far as the play, as far as the character is concerned, he got better. Yeah. As far as as far as the halflings are concerned, um, they're so sorry he got cursed. Well, in the case of Dixie, okay, elf may not be in equipment. Okay, so there will be some things that happen with the story. Jeremy will be familiar with it from. They're Tuesday night. So, Jeremy, can you give me uh, 2d10 rolls, please? Oh, good. Got to up today, haven't Well, they missed a session, uh, so... Oh. <laughs> One and four. Okay. Uh, can you do the same for me, Martin? Um, I don't have any dice. Jeremy, can you do it for Martin? For uh, sorry, Martin. Nine and ten. <laughs> cool. Okay, so um, Izzy, could you do the same? Yeah. I'm gonna go and see if um, yep. my daughter's got dice. <laughs> I'm sure she should. You've been playing with her for a while. Well, I we did um do a bit of D and D back in January. Yeah. Not so, me. Uh, but which order do you want them in? That's that would be a ten. Ten and six. Okay. Okay, so we'll start off with um, uh, the story picks up at the start of um, uh, the end of winter, technically. So the end of winter happens in the first day of the third month of the year. Mm. So you're in the year uh, 1010. The characters have been playing since the year 1000. So it's been almost 10 uh, sessions a year, except for the fact that most of the sessions happened in the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So uh, uh, it uh, happened that after one day of um, fighting on the lake, uh, Dimitri got hit by a horrible scar. So, Jeremy, what sort of scar and why did it happen? I have a sore scar, so I'm good. And we're going to be on the lake, aren't we? Yep, you are. Okay. Um, the forces that we're facing uh, uh, took advantage of the, the lake, the presence of the lake and all the water around, um, and the, uh, the recognition that uh, Koga and Dimitri have uh, uh, fire element base elementals and uh so yeah so he got afflicted when a enemy called up a uh, massive gust of freezing air that also uh gathered up water spray and forced uh daggers of ice uh cutting across the deck of the boat uh dimitri obviously uh, attempting to protect others and save them as the uh and while they were diving for cover etc um he was not diving for cover obviously because it happened to be diving in the same time covering near dive <laughs> or he didn't know um <laughs> <laughs> the and uh but yeah so so yeah not taking full brunt of this uh daggers of ice that came and swept across the deck and uh, whilst he uh, recovered somewhat physically, he, uh, he did leave uh, significant, uh, t- 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 two significant gashes across his uh, teeth and through and across the side of his head, which actually then means that the, uh, there's a, a, a gap in his fiery red hair uh, across this, like effectively on one side of his head, or like a part of the side of the head, that uh, he's just not going back again properly, his skin's all being scarred away from it. So, which side of the face again? Uh, effectively, like basically the, the left hand side of the face and skull. Basically, it's the, uh, uh, the, the, the hair is very odd looking there because it's obviously a large patch of bear. You believe it has something to do with the demon of the lake? Mm. Uh, there is an island in the middle of the lake that anyone who uh, sees it is compelled to go there and anyone who steps foot on it is never seen again. Okay then. <laughs> we so we so almost lost the character. Kind of plan, yeah. or? Okay, so uh, uh, then on the 11th of the month, Trellin uh, managed to catch the interest of the Master specifically. What did Trellin do to get the interest of the Master? Um, I dance on water. Is that reasonable? That's completely up to you what you consider reasonable. I'm, I'm going with whatever you choose to interject here is why the master is interested in you specifically above everyone else. Remember, the master is the big bad guy right now. And he's, the, he's, he's the guy who is most likely level 36. And the one who's leading the army that we're trying to fight. Well, that sounds fine. Okay, so that brings us to Rain Ginkgo. Rain Ginkgo, on the 21st of the month, managed to pick up a cursed item. What was it? Oh, God. Um, well, it could literally be that reason. <laughs> um, and, I've, and I've had people, when they call that God damn it, have had the God's answer back going, why are you damning me? <laughs> it's 
especially on Pathfinder. The gods really listen there. Um, I'm just going to look at the stuff I have here. I'm going to say it's a cursed whip. And why did your character decide to pick it up? Um, I'm there. She decided to pick, <laughs> pick it up because, well, one, she thought Shiny. it looked cool, but two, two, she thought it could be something that she could alter and use to possibly, like, help protect herself. It. <laughs> that I can work with. Okay, so that brings us to back to uh, Dimitri. I'm sure Jeremy's um, uh, looking forward to the next one. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dimitri took a hit to his constitution. How did uh, what really bad thing happened that uh, he needed um, help to recover from? Uh, well, surprisingly, he's not particularly concerned. Yeah, because uh, I mean, he grew up always as a bit of a, a sickly child, uh, not the uh, never particularly. Uh, hale and hearty. It's, like, it's not like you had access to good food and good nutrition and everything like that growing up. Which is why uh, quite early on he uh, managed to find and collect a specific magical item that means that he's always hale and hearty irrespective of the actual physical capacity. So um the, uh, okay, so the, the event so, so he's got an amulet that he never takes off, that means that he's always going to be happy, hail and hearty. However, that does mean that he has to actually recognise that uh, the uh, impact of this event that actually effectively uh, poisoned him and Actually, no, poison is a bad one, so I think it's immune to poison. Uh, no, it's, it's Tuesday night that's immune to poison. Tuesday's immune to poison, that's okay. That's right. <laughs> well, okay. Irrespective of what the effect was, it was definitely um, the effect of a, a poison within him that uh, because he didn't actually notice the effects initially, uh, it was uh, not. Uh, eliminated and removed for a few days after the effect and which caused it to become a permanent uh, disability in that idea. So but of course, Dimitri soldiers on uh, and puts on a great face that everyone's aware of that hey, he's still there to help help and help and uh, help the others and obviously hiding the uh, the, the reduction of constitution behind his hand of health. So from perspective of the others, Dimitri has a hacking cough that he doesn't, uh, he, 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 he's sure is absolutely nothing. No matter how much um, blood comes up, it's, it, it's, oh. his, his amulet can, cures everything. Hmm. He still feels fine, it's all good, don't worry about it. So he, he doesn't look as if well, anything's well, worse, it's just, that the, the sea air, he says, he's just allergic to it. I mean, I wouldn't want to waste the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the healer's capacities of time on such insignificant things when there are others much more worthy of the Okay, so that brings us to Trellon. Well, uh, we need... So Trellon, on the uh, seventh day of the fourth month, so you've actually been fighting uh, for over a month now, on the ocean. Uh, Trellon had his uh, soul stolen. Um, how did uh, uh, Trellon react to that and how did it happen? Well, what does it mean? Without your soul, everything just felt uh, lifeless and dead. You, you could not smell, taste, or feel any sensation whatsoever. It felt like you were back in the back here. Did he get it back, or is it just gone now? I, I'm a, that's going to be his choice. He can he can either have it back or not have it back. Here, his option. I, I want it back. Fine, <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine, fine. I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> so, so fr from the from the prompting is you've lost your soul in some way. What happened, and how did you get it back? Um. So after what do you say? Thirty-seven days. Um. My soul was taken, 
and um, what would be a conceivable thing in order to get it back? Well, you could have um, tracked down those who stole it, sunk their ship, and managed to recover your soul. Well, that sounds correct. Correct. How, 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 well, I can run on water, so hopefully I could track them down. So how long did it take you to get your soul back? Uh, probably another three weeks. So three weeks to get your soul back. But so far, you're the one who's lasted the longest without a soul. The longest anyone else previously has lasted was four days. Mm. Okay. So uh, I don't mind. I, I think it's actually quite good for the story. Well, um, so because I was a halfling, I guess I'm technically only 37. Um... You're young for an elf, but they turned you from your uh, maturity into an equal maturity for an elf, so you lost about a hundred years of adolescence. Okay, no worries. Well, not no worries, but yes. Okay, so Rain Ginkgo uh, managed to uh, uh, lose some charisma on a wisdom. Actually, it was you took wis uh, wisdom hit. What happened to you that caused you to uh, lose some wisdom for a while or permanently? Mm. So I can choose whether this was temporary or permanent. Mm -hmm. Because so, magic is capable of restoring a lot of these things. Okay. Not that everyone takes it. Okay. Um, well, during a fight where she was sneaking around doing rogue things and also causing a distraction distraction while like casting light on herself and like flying around opponents one of them managed to swat at her knocking her into a war and giving her a very major concussion <laughs> okay so Okay, so the story will pick up soon on the first day of the fifth month because that's the day that uh, you managed to recover Trell and Sol. <laughs> so what what's going to be asked here is uh, Dimitri uh, managed to basically get uh, some bad stuff happening by being splashed in the face with frozen water from the lake. Has yeah. Dimitri gotten any um, uh, hang-ups or phobias relating to the ocean? having heard that anything that goes beneath the waves never comes back. Because the demon oh, of the no. lake has become active. Oh, no. Uh, and having seen that effect on the fact that yeah, nothing come back up going on the top side, the, uh, okay, he's certainly uh, justifiably wary of the lake, because obviously he would come to explain to everyone before he even got here all the, uh, the link of rumours saying what not to do, what to do, everything like that, prior to arriving kind of stuff. So, so obviously he knew all the dangers already, and therefore there's no, no reason to be uh, additionally concerned, uh, except of course for, as I say, he's still wet and cold, and hey, Dimitri doesn't do wet and cold very well. <laughs> there's a lot of things he doesn't not do very well. Not complain, obviously. No one, no one ever realised that it was a problem for him. Good, good. Even such things. Okay, so so Trellin with uh, dancing on the waves to gain the master's attention has had nightmares um, ever since of uh, someone calling him Wave Dancer uh, <laughs> with, a, with a rather gravelly voice that sounds as if um, they're speaking to him um, uh, you know, from hell. Okay. And every night he's been hearing this, even though uh, uh, no matter what he tries, whether he um, uh, actually goes into a trance or not, he, he still ends up dreaming and having this vision quest with this guy who calls him Wave Dancer and that he's coming for him. We 
gotta get to him first. I, I think, that's just me. Okay, so, uh, Rain Ginko with this uh, amazing cursed whip. Of course, it wasn't cursed when you picked it up, as far as you know. Yeah. It's fantastic when this um, whip sizes itself perfectly for you, but still yeah. goes out as far as it normally would. Yeah. And uh, it, it does this uh, really cool flaming effect that uh, basically burns things and whatever it hits. Nice. Uh, the only side effect is every time you try to pull out another weapon, that you always pull out the whip. Okay, so. <laughs> but hey, maybe a whip call you for good anyway, be nice. <laughs> and so that would give you reach too? Is that the, the benefit of the. Well, whip? It, it gives a reach and can also do things such as um, entangle someone or strangle them or blind them. There are many things you can do with a whip. Whips are very versatile, um, tools and weapons. So I can just never pull out my spear or dagger again? Well, at this stage, until someone does the remove curse on you. Okay. Of course, that, that's if you actually let them do the remove curse on you. <laughs> so, yeah, let me... Let's, where'd she go? <laughs> let's see how well this whip works. Okay, and... Uh, uh, Maybe we can obviously help you with remove curse if you wish it, but... I want to see how it goes first. Yeah, D D Dimitri's really up at dawn and he's always in bed before um, uh, sunset. No particular reason. Okay. Though most people do hear that hacking and coughing that does not come from his room at all. Yeah. Well, okay. Not that he did, not, not that he'd bother anyone with such trifles. And uh, Trellin, after three weeks of not tasting or feeling a single thing, is suddenly infused with sensation. How does Trellin deal with the fact that Trellin has been removed from life for the last uh, three weeks? You haven't even felt what... You, you don't even notice when people stab you up until you got your soul back. You didn't even find Dimitri very annoying. <laughs> No, it's very really engaged when you've got your soul taken. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be positive. Yeah. Like, maybe that's why it's just when we need to follow each other. Hang on. <laughs> yes, there, there was good elements to it. <laughs> so how did Trollin deal with um, having lost his soul and having it returned? Um... Well, so certainly the, so me dancing on the water is the cause, is, is the, the proximal cause of the um, soul being taken? Is that well, you think you were targeted, but hey, it's hard to tell. Though you do have memories when you get your soul back of um, being used to power a gun. So uh, some 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 of your memories, yeah, some of your memories of being a halfling have been used to power a gun. Okay. Didn't need that anyway. Well, let's storm the island. Dimitri, explain why that's a bad idea. Okay, tell me again. <laughs> this time, while he cares. <laughs> Okay, the island is not somewhere we want to go. It's somewhere we haven't let the enemy go. Because, hey, but it's also a realisation that uh, whilst we've been taking advantage of the fact that uh, the uh, it, it, any enemy that gets attracted to the island or dragged into the waves is definitely gone. Uh, we have realised that uh, oh, we could win the war by having the entire Master's army trapped into the island, into the, into the lake. Uh, that would result in some bigger problems resulting afterwards. Okay. But yes, the island is a bad place to be. Okay. 
or to go, or to see, or to look at, or to recognise its existence. <laughs> and uh, Rankingo has, uh, it's been uh, close to about 15 days since you had that concussion. Uh, how, how do you feel about flying amongst the enemy now that one of them managed to swat you um, without even knowing you were there? Um, she's definitely a lot, I'm definitely a lot more, a lot more like cautious now. Also, she is kind of upset said that she can't throw a dagger from like a range now, but like she's still got a whip, so still so got a ranged attack. You can always just tie the uh, dagger to dagger. the end of the whip. And Ooh, what do you do? <laughs> But there's nothing stopping you flying a dagger. It's just that every time you think about flying a dagger, you realise the wind fell off. Instead of throwing a dagger, I throw the wind. <laughs> but yeah, she's definitely a lot more cautious, and she is kind of beating herself up about it. Just like, God damn it, you've been on the run for years now. you got to be aware of swatting, girl. But then again, not many people could see you. Mm. Now you're into it. They smell strawberries. Just <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a feature or um, uh, just because? It's just because I got them from my daughter. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. You've been using them and uh, storing them in other things. Well, it's, it's called sweet strawberries and. Um, oh, okay. So so the, 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 the tin that they are uh, housed in. So I don't know what was in the tin. Um, before they were placed in the tin. Well, who knows? Could have just been strawberry lollies. So, uh, you find yourself out on the lake. You've been informed from uh, some of the clerics who have been travelling with you that they've had visitations overnight about dangers of overfeeding the lake. About that the, that the... That the... That the lake is, uh, the demon of the lake is becoming active. Well, that doesn't seem like a good thing. And if it becomes active, uh, it will most likely rampage and do far more damage than the master could. Do I put it back to sleep? Unfortunately, the only way to put it back to sleep is to starve it. Okay, then. Which is not easy to do when you're in the middle of combat and... Yeah. Go, Jeremy. I'd like to say yes. Considering we're still trying to fight off a horde of army, and whilst the, the, the master forces are probably not quite so prevalent on the lake if they are in some of the land positions, uh, but yes. Uh, trying to stop it, trying to uh, prevent the master from crossing the lake without sinking his forces would be a challenge. It would, especially as they bring up the map so people can actually see where they are. That's a freaking huge lake. Yep. Just focusing on the lake itself. So, uh, you know that one group from Redrian is at Fort Ainsleberry. which is against the lands of the Utrogan, who you've heard have uh, risen up and united for the first time in history. They normally war against each other, and everyone else is happy about that. Because okay. their entire culture is about war. Okay. And it's being feared that one day they'll, they'll all gang together and then take on the rest of the world. Hmm. And but they do explain again. They fall, they're falling behind. They're, they're claiming some random barbarian guy as uh, their chief of chiefs. So. <laughs> There's no one more. Yeah, he's Tuesday that character. Okay. He, he likes to diss his other characters in character. Okay. Okay. Dimitri likes to diss everybody. Uh, and the Republic's forces have gathered at that fort to hold the master at the river. Because if it manages to get past the lake, they don't think that they can stop it. It's just open pasture land past that point. Okay. Uh, I can show you by basically saying once he once he gets past that area there, they can go wherever they want in that nation and not easily be stopped. 
there's no fortifications beyond that point. Uh, then on the north, um, the Friday group are holding them at Fort Lakeside uh, because basically that's the only other route besides going over the lake. What you have found is the master hasn't been able to sail past Ithildown Island in the center of the lake. Uh, whenever it tries to go past it, it just stops in the water no matter how much breeze or how fast it's going. It's like it's just uh, hit a reef and just comes to a dead stop. Mm. It's even knocked some of their boats over and they've just gone under. Is that why the demon is awakening? Cause... There's lots of food on the lake. Mm. <laughs> it's a smorgasbord. Uh uh, our horses found the same thing, or they just potentially never got near the lake anyway. Well, you've been working with um, the piratical halflings. Yeah. Uh, you've been uh, able to sail with them on some of their boats designed for uh, catering for large folk, as they call it. Which means um, you, you just sort of have to crouch and huddle your way through some of their areas. Or we'll stay, we'll stay above decks. Or we'll stay above decks. And uh, that they've always known to stay away from the island. But they do have a reputation that uh, they would like to uphold that when they attack, uh, there are no survivors. Hmm. That the halflings are uh, the worst pirates of the sea and they've come in force to help. Okay. And so you've got full... Uh, Full pirate crews um, around you, basically willing to just absolutely throw themselves at the enemy. And you're you're being up against uh, some of the uh, strangest people you've ever seen. They look like they have a mixture of um, ogre and elven blood in them. And you've only ever heard of one or two people with a mixture of races before, and you've been facing thousands of them. So it means it's, it's not a one-off, it's an actual species that is a mixture of um, two different races. Right, but obviously all demonic monsters. And so the, these ones are, are sitting at the uh, eight to nine feet in height. So of the large size of medium. And so they're fighting these people who are at the uh, three to four feet in height. <laughs> and not doing very well against them. Uh, the uh, pirates are all taking their um, lead from the guy on your ship who just refers to himself as the cook. Okay. He has a uh, chef's hat and um, carving knives and all he has to do is suggest something and the halflings uh, pretty much do it without even thinking. Hmm. He doesn't call himself the captain. He lets other people call themselves the captain. But he just suggests things here and there, and it gets done. Plus, he can't. Like me, really. <laughs> uh, and he, he has. Uh, uh, you have learned that he is the retired leader of an order of assassins. Retired to and be. He, also cook. he prefers cooking, so he, he actually knows how to cut up any living creature and um, serve it as food. He doesn't call it cannibalism if it's not halflings. He does have a few halfling recipes as well. Okay. <laughs> and he's a good guy. Well, well he's, he's not technically evil unless um, uh, you're, you're against him at the time. But he is the brother-in-law of the dwarf of your party. Okay. And has threatened to show him how to make dwarf kebabs. If he doesn't behave himself. As you do, I guess. Well, the, the dwarf can be disrespectful at times. He's learned not to. Because of a kebab thing? Well, um, they've seen the halfling take out um, uh, uh, probably whole towns of people by himself. And his uh, younger sister while he was romancing the, while the dwarf was romancing her, killed an in full of people so they could have the room to themselves. Mm. The bodies were still there while they were uh, having their date. Mm. Uh, apparently the dwarf was quite happy with that. He thought it was a great romantic gesture. Well, at least he still could go complain. 
Not good, fine, it's getting better. Well, worst things that can happen. So you find yourself um, with uh, two ships out on the lake at the moment. And you can two of your ships out on the lake. Yep. And you've figured out that the uh, central island has moved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does that. Uh, you, you've never actually heard of it moving in the past. It, it's been rather um, static for as long as anyone can remember. Well, that would be the normal. How far has it moved? Uh, well, considering you, know, the, each one of those hexes there is eight miles. Very hard to tell exactly how far it's moved during the day because you don't have the stars to give you position. <sighs> Dimitri can come by. Sure. Okay. Dimitri can give me a. Does he have um, a cartographer's tools? That's normally what you use to determine positioning and stuff. Yeah. That's right. He, he'll, he'll make do with the navigator's tools. <laughs> that will do. Give me a uh, skill check for that, Jeremy. I'm sure Dimitri knows how to do everything. Absolutely. That's what he tells me. All he's got to do is put his mind to it. So, oh. 17, did I start to... Um, <laughs> he always rolls well yeah. when he doesn't mean to. <laughs> uh, well, I'm assuming it probably counts as an uh, intelligence check un- uh, like without efficiency, which would make him 23. Okay. So uh, he's managing to figure out that the island has moved about 30 miles towards Akasoli. I oh, no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Which has... Uh, 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 so that's the city on this side. Okay. And... Uh, okay, it has been noted that the master forces still can't go past the island. But have they been effectively stopped from going past the island for the entire width of the lake or just for a certain boundary around the lake? Uh, from what you can tell, they seem to be funneled towards the island. Okay. So the uh, further away they are from the island, the more um, e- uh, west they have to be. Yep. Uh, so as the island approaches Akasoli, then that reduces the potential scope for the master forces. Now... That's the good news. And the bad news, of course, is hang on. Yep. Uh, the uh, the demon that is the island, which is why it's now moving, and explains the 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 to make sure it gives a long and detailed explanation on exactly how the awakening of the demon and uh, effectively the island is the demon and therefore uh, uh, it, it, it's become mobile as well as sentient. Um, and, but, yes, <laughs> if the island actually gets near Akasoli and therefore near the significant forces of the master, including the uh, mountaintop that the master has placed down on top of Akasoli. You, you dropped a mountain on the city. Um, hmm. That would probably be bad. Uh, can uh, characters can make a arcana check to see if they know something about this? Yeah, I only got nine for a total of nineteen. I got twelve. How about travel? Uh, what's the skill? Arcana. Arcana. Okay. 
Well, it looks as if Dimitri is the one who uh, has got a bit of information for you. With uh, you putting your heads together. No, that's not right. Dimitri has a lot of information for you. <laughs> <laughs> Some of which will be relevant, but of course, all of it is important. Uh, you think that the island may potentially be a uh, beast of legend and not actually an island. That would make you say. You talk of a demon, but that's just a, he was using the colloquial term. And uh, uh, a, a demon may actually have a work in the island. So the island itself is different to the demon. Okay, then. And that something uh, titanic may be coming out of the um, lake itself. Most things don't swim around the island in the center of the lake. Okay. Uh, uh, do the legend or information that Dimitri can uh, recall uh, talk about technique to help with beasts of legend back to sleep? Uh, yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not a case of, yeah, they want a really good meal and uh, <laughs> a cup of warm milk and then go back to sleep. <laughs> so m most of the legends that you've heard of titanic creatures uh, talk of um, uh, questers to become gods, having uh, <laughs> defeated such beasts in their quest for godhood. Generally, not killing said beasts, but defeating them because defeating them was beyond them. Mm. So I'm sure Dimitri's um, up to the challenge. Well, it, 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 but normally, questing for godhood, well, obviously, yeah, something Dimitri will get around to, the, uh, it, it's probably going to take a bit of time. <laughs> normally, they're fairly long term goals. Uh, so I guess on that sense, obviously, to be on the quest, so he qualifies. And each of each story tells of having a fully activated artifact being the reason that they succeeded. Yeah, well, that's on the to-do list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, diamond is. Fairly activated. Uh, Not fully activated. So the island itself is the beast, but we think that a demon is the one that will work in it, not the feeding? Not the feeding, you think the demon's been uh, feeding the beast to wake it up. Okay. Can I look for any signs on like where the demon is? Sure. Give me a uh, insight roll. Four. Four. Okay, so uh, you're not exactly sure where it is. Uh, have, do you have insight as a skill? Um, yes, but I'm not proficient. <laughs> okay, so yes, uh, you're not exactly sure where it is. You're sure it's somewhere in the lake? Yeah. It's, you can it's guarantee somewhere. it's somewhere in the lake. Somewhere in the lake, guys. Big broad gesture. Everyone's going. I actually have insight. So, <laughs> so would uh, Trunlin like to have some insight? Um, sorry, my mum's really. Twenty-five. That's quite good. Twenty-five. Insight. Twenty-five. 25, not quite as good as 45. I did like 45 as a roll. I thought it was fantastic. But it would have been pretty impressive. Yeah, it was, would have been very impressive. Almost gun like. So. Uh, Almost to make you like. You do know that a structure has been built on the island, so possibly uh, there is uh, an actual network inside the creature, and the demon will probably be somewhere deep inside. Hmm. Mm. But that means you have to set foot on the island, and no one who does ever seems to come back. Good thing I can fly then. 
does help. <laughs> it's oh, I can just walk up to it. Yeah, the, 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 the problem is when you get foot catching on, like if you can walk up, that's fine. Standard water catch. The problem with being as good as someone touches that post line. And heroes of legend have lost their names by going to the island. The story stops at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you want to do? Is there any indication in the sto stories that, like, whatever's, like, making people disappear when they, like, set foot on the island, that it's magic? Or is it, like, the bee bees? Like, are they being the, go the gods can't even tell them. No matter what questions they ask, no one knows what happens the moment they set foot on the island. Every everyone sort of fades away when they step on the island from sight from someone who's not on there. When the source is set foot, does it mean literally? Literally. Set foot? Okay, so I, I can, I can scout the island because I can fly, and I won't have to step foot. Give on me a history island. check. Well, the the problem is that uh, even looking at the island can be dangerous. That is a 16. Okay. Histories that you know of this place is those who look at it either go mad or um, go to the island and aren't seen again. And it can be just looking in its general direction wanting to see the island can cause that to happen. Hmm. Which is why to make me remind everyone before the first day of battle, we first arrived at the lake, we said, hey, don't look at the island. It's known as basically a demonic trap. Okay. So I'm not going to the island then. Well, I'll stop that demon. Unless, of course, it's like it in the island. Get to the island but... Though you do notice that the uh, more you, closer you've come to the island, the more of an undertow you're having being pulled along its wake. The island is almost moving as fast as you are. Mm, that doesn't seem like a good thing. Uh, it, 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 does the island appear to be moving in a constant direction, or, is, or the generally it's getting up about 30 miles west of where it started? Well, by the time you uh, figured out where it was, it was 30 miles west, but it is moving in a constant direction straight towards Akasoli, and you can actually see the wake of the island's movement. And occasionally, small uh, other islands uh, appear briefly uh, in the distance. But surely, we're heroes, so we should defeat the monster. That's my thing. Uh, so if the, if this was a printed module where you were facing against um, uh, a, ta a tiering challenge thing, yes, you would be able to face it. But the premise of this campaign is you occasionally come across things that can and will defeat you easily. Okay. So the legends, yes, say that uh, heroes defeat, overcome any obstacle. But it's really explain that legends are glad to actually keep them followed, but don't believe in anything really. And legends are only told by the victors, not by those who were defeated. Mm. So if anyone um, def uh, defeated this, you would have heard legends of it. Yeah. You've never heard a legend of anyone defeating it. Great. It would be the uh, uh, ultimate achievement of any hero to have stepped on the island and gotten off. The question is, apparently, seemingly, we need to have someone who's on the quest of Godhood. Uh, he's the only one who can put the, uh, the beast to sleep. Using a, uh, an artifact of the gods to assist him in that process. Now, obviously, the beast could fulfill the requirement if needed, but 
more immediate concern is that uh, the island is currently heading directly towards the Marxist location, uh, who has certainly got some sort of artifact of description that he's got full control over, or that at least he's uh, fully activated, because presumably it's an artifact that's powering his ability to uh, uh, move the mountaintop with a tree of life upon it and uh, this is a world tree. constantly recollect uh, those that have died, including died multiple times. So he can keep bringing back the dead. Are you in a position, Dimitri, to cast an anti magic shell on the island? He's not that good a wizard. <laughs> Okay. That's right. 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 That's So you could potentially uh, remove the magical effect, uh, but then it would probably not be uh, directed in a specific direction. Uh, Once you wake something up, it's very hard to tell it to go back to sleep again. I think it's back on the head really hard. That might work. Or it's Monday morning. <laughs> And technically, it is the first day of the month. So in this setting, every month has 28 days. Okay. And every 15th day of the month is a full moon. And the full moon is significant to um, all religions. Okay. So uh, the with the five elements, each uh, season is uh, great for one element. So for uh, spring is the sphere of matter or, or the earth gods and the week between each season is where entropy is best because that's where one season uh, fades and another season comes in. So they're the one who, ones who help with the transition. Yeah. So they, they value the new moon over the full moon. So that's where the uh, calendar comes into it. So, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to follow the island and see what happens? Or do you uh, want to try to stop the island? Considering you've got Dimitri with you. I'm sure he can save everyone. Is there a way that we can like redirect the island to go away from well, the big bad evil guy? The island is going towards the big bad evil guy. Yeah. Does that mean that it's going to help or hinder the big bear evil guy? Is it it's something... currently being killing all its forces on the lake. Mm. Okay. Or oh, possibly he's the. Uh, maybe it's maybe uh, they're not. We like he's still hungry. <laughs> well, like, like, there is certainly some uh, alternative theoretical scenarios that might be occurring here. The idea. Of, okay. Yep. <clears throat> the uh, legendary beast was awakened. Probably under the influence of uh, the demon inside it. Um, but the, and the demon inside it awakened the beast by feeding it all the uh, body and entities that have been uh, killed over the last couple of months. The back souls of the dead of the island. <coughs> the, but the problem is then, yes, is the beast uh, naturally drawn to the power? That represented by the Marxist um, influence and the, the mountaintop, or is the Marxist drawing the beast towards him? Uh, either to uh, take control, if he thinks he might be able to take control, or uh, subdue the beast in some way, uh, or Confident that he can put the beast back to sleep again, which means that his forces can then cross the lake uh, much more strategy. Okay. Um, Do you want to follow and try to identify the beast as you go? 
Ja, alle moet ik echt een gunning hebben gestaan en hij heeft dicht zijn gebeuren in het Ik ga het... Ik ga het niet meer doen, het is het meest likely. Het is het meest Okay, so I will give each of you a perception check as you're following the creature over the lake. And as long as we think it's a creature, then we're not looking at the island. And that's like, I think that's what I to look at. <laughs> Unnatural 20. Unnatural right. 20, that's always nice. How did Trellon go with his... Uh, uh, 15. 15. With your amazing elf eyes, you don't do as well as the pixie. <laughs> well, I roll an ace, so... <laughs> How about Dimitri? Dimitri's on 23. Okay, so you've been able to determine that this uh, island has uh, at least four limbs, a tail, and uh, a head that exists uh, either side of the island. Is, it, is this just a giant toe? Could be. Two heads, man. Uh, one giant head, but the head. Uh, head itself almost has um, uh, mountain um, ridges on top of it when it breaches the water. Not for long. Okay. It seems to uh, take uh, uh, boats out of the water on its way. So um, what we first interpreted a hall where uh, small island or large reef poking out around the island will actually be living tail of the head, is that right? That is correct. Yeah. And uh, each of you can make a arcana check with advantage having seen a lot more of this beast. Unfortunately, I only got 18 total. Uh, <laughs> two and eight, eight. So I can go by total. 16 total. How did Trollin do? Yeah, I got 18 as well, but it's uh, with no bonus. Well, hey, nothing uh, actually um, can be all bad. So, looking at it, you think it is uh, one of the legendary titans uh, reawakened. Uh, the equivalent of Godzilla coming out of the lake. Uh, who could have had uh, <laughs> there are rumours that the lake itself was where this titan landed the last time it was felt. And the lake is the crater of its fall. Ooh. <laughs> and it hasn't and it hasn't been awake since the time of Blackmore. So it's been four thousand years asleep. And is the that possibly answers the question I was about to ask him, do we know what brought him down previously? And I'm guessing maybe the Blackmore brought him down previously. It or was maybe the, caught, caught in the crossfire of Earthfall. It was either the Dragon Gods, the Black Morians, um, or uh, the war between them. Because the Dragon Gods fell on the other side of the uh, Master's forces. There's an area um, where the uh, dragon blood can be harvested to make gunpowder. It's the only gunpowder that works. Everything else has been broken. Okay. Um, Which means it's a limited resource. So do we know uh, if, it, if we if it potentially you got knocked out of the crossfire, which gives you an indication of what the forces were involved, if, if this being could be accidentally uh, affected. Um, do we know if this beast had uh, any inclinations in its uh, actions beforehand? Uh, Is it likely to be supportive of uh, his history calls it <laughs> history calls it the great devourer. Mm -hmm. So he's hungry. Yeah. So, mm. But maybe it actually, uh, it was, uh, not actually taken down by any effect of deliberately. It was just, oh, you yeah, had enough food, it was gone. You went back to hibernation for a little while. Um, though legend does say that a, a mighty hero tried to throw it into orbit, 
and it's uh, basically coming back down to land is what caused the greeter. Mm. Because hey, some heroes can throw things off long distance. Mm. But apparently not quite enough for escape velocity. Not enough for escape velocity, no. So it is possible to defeat. Yes. Just um, can you throw something of Titanic size? That's a no from me. Um. <laughs> That's right. You, you can fly. You can move it up on me. Like yeah, I'm also eight, in, in, eight inches tall, so <laughs> and have minus strength. So. And you figured out that uh, that the creature itself <laughs> is uh, close to a mile in length um, uh, of what is breaching the water. So the island itself was, had built sediment up around the creature. Okay. I could have cut it here. Probably the island is going to be looking like about 15 miles across, or more to the south, about 24 east to west. Well, you think it's about a mile long, but it's hard to tell because you've never seen the entire thing out of the water. That's right. We're only seeing it actually get over the surface. It's just in the ice that it's floating. Okay. Do we know the alignment of the creature? It's had, it has no um, uh, known uh, alignment. So most things are either chaotic, neutral, or lawful. So it can fit into all the alignments at the same time. Okay then. Um, yes, yes. So I think the alignment is best done by folks hungry. Hungry is probably the best alignment. <laughs> So uh, uh, only um, uh, like uh, servants of gods have uh, good or evil as a fixed alignment. Okay. Everyone else is your actions determine whether you're good or evil. Okay. And it's not fixed. So you can be good one day and evil the next. Okay, then. Um... <laughs> so that's why people strive to be good, because uh, when you start uh, flagging as evil, bad things seem to flock towards you. Because the good things no longer protect you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like a major character that says it's labelled as goodish. <laughs> good most of the time? Well, he's always good at my Is there any way we can tell its like, motive for going towards big bad evil bad? Well, you have heard that there is uh, a uh, major ley line has been connected to that city. Uh, which connects to all the planes. Okay. So the literal world tree of um, uh, the Norse belief system has been dropped on that location, as a, a and that connects ley lines all over the world. Yes, it's sort of the first thing. I mean, in the I the the beast. Uh, no, the the Akasoli, so that little black thing on the side of the lake. Yeah. Uh, uh, the evil bad guy dropped that on the city. Okay. So the tree itself it was marked. With it. It. So it the branches went out on the east side and went blop. The oh, party nice. meant only only managed to get everyone out who didn't want who wanted to go before they did that. Okay. They got to see the devastation of it. Okay. And it is one of the uh, six big cities of the world. Okay. Um. So you think you only need to follow it for uh, just over a day or so before it reaches the shore, if that's what you want to do? Um. <laughs> uh, okay. I would say want to try to come up with uh, effective alternatives to the challenge. Um, Dimitri is uh, yeah. he, he's definitely tempted to try and contact Yen mm -hmm. and uh, ask whether or not hey you think got enough juice for this diamond to uh, stop that BC? <laughs> He does have uh, foreknowledge that if he's in the domain of another higher power, he may contact them instead. Mm. Such as uh, he has heard that Loki, because uh, well, he, he wasn't part of that group, Loki was able to subvert another call to a god. 
and answer in their stead. Yeah. And that was just in the city where they worshipped Loki. How how confident is he that he can uh, get past whatever demon is running this lake? Oh, you mean like if he's going to contact the entrance of the dark planet? Yeah. Uh, well, he's probably desperate enough to try it. Okay. Now, that's not the sort of case. He knows that there's a risk that the information he's gained is not necessarily from an accurate source, but it would still potentially be interesting to find out what the action is, and then he can make a decision that it's not a good source. source. Okay. okay, so give me a religion roll to see if he can contact Yem through his artifact. Uh, 24. Well, nothing bad happens that time. Oh. Well, he, he has habits. Or when you use an artifact, there's always a drawback. Okay. okay. And <laughs> it can be nasty. Hmm. And, well, technically, he is covering your back from the skill. <laughs> so, the can work. <laughs> okay, so as you uh, feel yourself connect to uh, Yem, uh, you feel Yem is slightly distracted at this stage. You haven't managed to talk to him much in the last year or so. Mm-hmm. What, he, you get the feeling that uh, he'll answer your questions briefly but not converse with you. Okay. And you believe you have three questions you can ask. Uh, 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 wow. You may or may not be aware that uh, the beast of the region and the uh, dimensional presumably given name this titan, titanic beast of the region. That beast has no name because it's not been seen in living history. Okay. Uh, um, it's been given lots of names by different people, but that name changes yeah. depending on uh, whim. Well, uh, would the be aware of a likely name uh, of the beast at the time that the uh, um, uh, what they call them, like uh, the elves that the eggs live with, we call uh, uh, the, the gentle the elves. Elves. Yes. So uh, they, uh, uh, they may have known it as the devourer, but uh, again, a lot of things have taken that name, including one of their um, troll gods. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got it by devouring more people in history than anyone else. Uh, Help me have uh, regeneration. Well, uh, okay, so the ritual mentioned that the, uh, the devourer, uh, the beast of nature devourer of Lake Amasak, uh has awakened and is currently heading directly towards the power source of the master. And what's his do, question? Do, do, do you have the... Can, can I uh, use the power of your device to try and uh, halt or distract the beast? And do we want to try and halt the beast from reaching the master? So which question do you want answered? But you said I had three. Yeah. <laughs> so it was the the question was could you use the uh, item to uh, distract the creature? Yeah, it doesn't have the power to distract and or kill the creature. Okay, two, I'll okay. And do we wish to prevent it from reaching the market? So from the first one you got yes and no. Mm-hmm. For the second one, maybe. And what's his final question? The question is, so, no, 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 the final question I'm guessing comes out to be the, uh, uh, 
do we need it? Uh, considering the threat the master faces, as does the devourer, do we wish to keep them apart? Okay, so you actually get a sentence from him for uh, the first time in this conversation, uh, mm -hmm. telling you that uh, only the crown of the hollow world would have that power. That could be fine. His gemstone is one fifth of the crown. That could be fine. Well, you've got to find uh, the other four gemstones. Mm. Because it's made up. And then put it together, uh, which in itself would probably take a lot of time. Uh, and worst of all, it probably means going down to Hollow World. The place where the sun <laughs> never sets and illusions don't work. Mm. And a lot of magic goes haywire. And only the uh, natives uh, are protected against um, the warping effects of the world, such that uh, they always have advantage against you, and you always have disadvantage against them. No matter how good or how well you do stuff, you're still at disadvantage, even if you give yourself advantage. That's partly why um, Dimitri and Trellon both hate the place. <laughs> Uh, As you feel the, uh, uh, after that statement, you feel the uh, connection to the God disappear. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh. You do know enough that you could distract the creature, but it probably, you probably wouldn't survive distracting the creature. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> <kind of true. laughs> if the character is trying to do the animation, he's got a long term competition. Uh, As I'm sure that uh, uh, Rain Ginko has uh, thoughts of uh, the entire ship being spotted like a bug, like she was. <laughs> She's getting flashbacks. <laughs> It, wow. it is almost like prophetic in that sense. Mm, yeah. Well, Dimitri got the technology. Okay, so the obvious next step is to uh, go back to the Atlas. <laughs> it's safer there? Well, no, he can gain access. Gain access uh, to the hollow world. You get, get to the, uh, the, the temple of the gods, the temple of knowledge, or power of knowledge, uh, uh, to gain, get, get, do some more research. Well, that would be the only way you'll uh, that you know of to find out where the other four gemstones might have gone. There's a good chance that they're not in the hollow world. Uh, but also, it's a long way from here. If they're not. <laughs> That's the question, because you said it's like a day until it reaches. <laughs> well, Dimitri's always, you know, uh, believed that he can get things done in time. No matter how often he's proved wrong, he's never wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, he thought he'd been wrong a couple of times. He realised he was mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you get everyone to turn back before you find out what happens, or do you wait and see? I would like to. Well, there you go. Make sure you get in the map. Yep. The, uh, uh, question will require, uh, more research. The, uh, but the, obviously, the creature is going to reach Akasoli before, uh, such research can be completed. Uh, now, it's possible that uh, we can slow it down, distract it enough uh, to at least stop its advancement upon uh, the whole the, uh, the master. Uh, but Unfortunately, 
if, they, if we do manage to do that, I don't think I can protect all of you. So what's your plan then? As your uh, halfling chef wanders over to see what you're planning on doing. He's, he's never cooked one of those before, whatever it is. <laughs> They're good eating one of them. I, sure. I think that like, one person should go back and do some research while the rest of us stay and try and distract and try and delay it as much as we can. As much as we can, just in case, like, there is a way to, like, stop this thing found, like, the library. No, it's going to take him probably about a month to reach that. Okay. <laughs> we can't, we can't. Then add research time on top of that one. Okay. So he might Deadline. come back in about six months and, and then help you. Okay. Okay, we can't delay him for that long. Um. It's, it's always nice to feel enthusiastic about things. I just want to give a reality thing from the half thing. Okay. Okay, um, hmm. Okay, okay. And it wasn't okay. Dimitri, did you say that I was going to talk to him about it? He was aware that was a time frame, and he planned was actually to effectively, uh, yep, gain the critics' attention by a focus feed from Yen Diamond, um, and then Scarpa. <laughs> but he wasn't going to take everyone else with him, if that's what it says. But you do know you can shoot um, 700 feet with my tree hands along the. You can. It's quite a nasty little bow. Mm. It really stones things it hits. It literally turns its arrows to stone when it hits it. Ooh. And it doesn't... Um, so, because of my sharpshooter feet, I don't get any disadvantage from that. Mm. He can shoot out the full length and hit things. The only problem is that even if you're still with the bow, it is unlikely to have a significant... Uh, it's unlikely to notice the uh, shot at the bottom. 5d8 plus 9. So you have a good try, but... And he's up to you if you wish to attack. Well... So what's your what's your advice? I can't just read the code. Obviously... Uh, Dimitri is coming up with a number of theories and hypotheses as to uh, the likely result, the potential results, uh, if the creature were to get to um, Akatoli and the last of uh, uh, Mountain. Now, uh, based on the fact that the lake currently formed by the crater which fell, uh, we certainly are in the understanding that the creature can quite happily jump walk on land. Frank on fire, but he's not he's not he's not slowly he's not uh, affected, he's not he's not purely aquatic, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, from the stories you heard, it was never aquatic. Yeah, that kind of thing, so mm. um, So it's it's better on land than it is below water. Yeah. Mm. Um so yeah, I guess. What would be to make your best guess as to whether it's uh, good or bad for the creature to actually meet the master, having had the word from Yen that yes or no? <laughs> well, if it is... Or, 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 or uh, the word from somebody who may have been Yen, <laughs> yes or no. If it is uh, uh, the great devourer of legend, um, I will give you a history roll for Dimitri and see if you can get some insight in that. Okay. Uh, 21. 21. Okay, so if, if it is... I didn't roll badly because it's not but half So history does uh, say the Great Devourer is a creature of nature. 
or uh, better put, an avatar of nature. Uh, and certainly the evidence we came from the market at the moment, considering his connections with entropy and the undead, uh, nature is likely to be somewhat averse to the master. Quite likely. Right? Nature is not always a good thing, but it doesn't like having itself abused. Yeah. Um. And stories of the Great Devourer, it has basically destroyed civilizations that were abusing nature. Just wiped them off the board. Uh. Uh. But with the. Uh. The great ley line that's been created to the Marcus mountaintop uh, be considered a thing of nature in any way? You believe it's a subversion of nature because they, they're not meant to be moved. Yeah. yeah. Mountaintop is supposed to stay still as I'm turning on top of them. <laughs> And normally uh, the trees didn't sit on top of a mountain, they sat in a uh, middle of a forest. Yeah, so... Yeah, Dimitri comes uh, back from uh, having a... Consult with some of his books again for a bit, just to uh, refresh his memory, make sure uh, doing the research. Um, yes, he'll let you know, okay, well... The good news is... Uh, well, sorry, but the bad news is we can't actually, we, we can't effectively stop the Beastie Jackets only. The good news is that will probably uh, severely crib if not destroy the master's plans and the, uh, the forces of which we are against. The bad news is it does not leave it to power away. <laughs> Unless it considered enough for a meal to go back to sleep. So, so Dimitri goes back and forth with good news, bad news, good news, bad news, multiple times. Um, Probably for more than an hour. Without their terms, make your statement as to which way he thinks he be going. Uh, or at least not when you've interpreted this, uh, this uh, monologue. Um, but, yes, from Dimitri's perspective, what it comes down to is. Well, we can't stop it, so we might as well get a grand fantasy. <laughs> and then try and deal with the aftermath, which is likely to be a lot worse, but maybe we'll have more time to think about it by that point. So maybe you can certainly come up with a plan given enough time. I'm and sure you can. Okay, so the plan currently, I believe, if I'm right, is you're going to follow and see what happens. Uh, I think that sounds good. Yeah. Um, the, the curtain of the master's uh, domain, yep. has that been going across the lake at all? Uh, if so, has it been, been pushed back by the, the island? Uh, the island has pushed it back. It was starting to go over the lake. <coughs> right, okay. Because obviously, yes, we are certainly not keen to go beyond the curtain. We're preparing back to add, along with many other things. Um, and so, hey, the advantage of following the, 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 the beast is we may get a better look at exactly what the, uh, the, the, the mountain, the, 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 well, the, the base of the master's operations are if the curtain gets pushed back far enough. At least momentarily before the beast and the, the mountain meet. Um. Okay. So it, it's now the uh, second day of the fifth month. As you can see, the city, or oh, oh, what's left of it, Akasoli in the distance with a huge tree over it. Basically, the tree is bigger than the city almost. Okay. And it's a mountain effectively on, like it's still on top of a mountain top? It is still on top of the mountain top, but the mountain top is pretty much sunk into what was remaining of the city. Right, okay. It, it wasn't light. <coughs> and, and, and when we compare it to the size of the tree, the tree mountain top look a bit like a hot layer. 
It does. It looks like this huge pot plant on, uh, yeah. in the distance. Basically, your brains go, I can't believe it's that big. <laughs> and you keep getting closer to it, and it's still getting bigger. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. You can take he, he, he assumed it was really big, but it was still all my way. And <laughs> not even the elves could be this big. And so as you get closer to it, you see the water in front of you start to bulge up. Do we need to grab onto something? I will give each of you a, a dexterity saving throw. I'm sure you're good at that. Because even, even the uh, pixie will need to make one or get uh, swatted into the water. I got to say, before the pixie's not even standing on the deck, he's probably going to fly above it, but... She's kind of just surviving with this, so like ropes and stuff I can mark her. That is 27. Which is pretty good for a rogue. Go, Jeremy. Okay, hopefully, he's okay too, because he's on 25. And how about Trellin? Obviously, the meeting was prepared for it. He's like, no, oh, hang on, yes, we're going to put the juice in the We'll uh, prepare and get ready. Oh, yeah. You guys, I'm going to hang on. 26. Okay, so apparently you're all the most dexterous people around as you all grab onto rigging as the uh, sails just drop, the wind that they're following just disappears. They got advantage of the fact that the big thing warned them what's going to happen and said, hey, you're being prepared. I don't think that was the case. <laughs> and you see what appears to be a. Uh, a uh, lizard of huge size start to crawl out of the lake in front of you. Okay. So big it almost appears to be as tall as the tree. That's a big lizard. A very big lizard. I will give each of you an advantage on Arcana Roll to identify it as you get to see what it looks like as it rises up. That is... Do I get to roll? You do get to roll. Oh. You, you still get to roll, because you, you may just twig. Oh, yeah, I got to So I have an advantage as well. Mm. Everyone has advantage. You've been discussing this through. Natural 20. Natural 20. And Jeremy, how did you go? Uh, 26 total. Okay, so between... Is coming out on, uh, on four legs, or is it effectively rearing up on, a, on two hind legs? Rearing like, up... Like how the preserver. Well... Rearing up on two rear legs, though the front legs seem to be uh, massive, unlike car. Yeah. So that's the dinosaur god. Oh. Uh, as you see, it appears to be what has been told in history as the god killer titan. Otherwise known as the Tarasque. Oh! Um, and there's a reason why it was asleep for so long. That a demon was actually burrowing in down to it in the island. Mm -hmm. And you see it basically uh, light up as it uh, breathes a uh, cone of energy at the city. Hey, Yeah. Can we see a, a, a little black wing figure riding on its back? <laughs> the demon of the <laughs> Uh, you do not, but you do see what appears to be remains of some sort of structure uh, in the middle of its back. It may have, um, uh, the demon may have um, burrowed down to the creature's heart. And uh, each of you gets to make a reflex saving throw again as the entire... Uh, Air in front of you goes blindingly white. Okay, so reflex is that just dexterity? Uh, dexterity, sorry, dexterity, dexterity, safe, yeah. Just How good you are? Just the one, one safe for that one. 24. 17. 27. Okay, so our pixie's eyes are hurting uh, quite a lot as you're a bit slow to um, close your eyes. Uh, you've got this after image of um, just blinding, looking at the sun. And then she calls out, watch me in your eyes, cover your eyes! A bit late for that, and she just like, <laughs> it. As you can feel the heat uh, from over, uh, 
seven or eight mile away. I'll be breathing at the tree. Okay. That seems to be... Uh, you saw it hit some sort of barrier and um, balance. Okay. And the barrier goes up as far as you can see. You can actually see a shimmering of light going all the way up and all the way out. Okay. And then it just feels like everything goes dark as it stops. Yet it's still sunlight. It's the middle of the day. It made the a day feel like darkness. That's how bright it was. And uh, the after effects it gives the indication of the fact that uh, the tree is still standing because of the shield that was up there around it, and the mask that provided. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, it it actually hit the curtain of death with its uh, uh, radiant breath. Yep, and the curtain at least was stood. Though, as far as you can see, you can actually see shoreline you didn't think you could see uh, before it did so. Um, and so, I'm kind of wondering if it's worth trying to fly over to the that the beast had actually examined that the structure that might be what's left the structure and see if we can find any evidence of a demon that might be in there. And uh, if we might be able to pick the demon if we're not actually any close to going to it. Rumours uh, are, are from what the pixie remembers is that uh, it was a um, pit fiend um, that was uh, trapped in the island. So the equivalent of the ball rock from Lord of the Rings. Okay. But hey, that, that, that's really out of our league, not out of our... <laughs> By comparison, yeah. By comparison, it's all right. Double, no problem. <laughs> And then as you watch, it seems to uh, claw out at this barrier, leaving great rents in it as it does so. Okay. Are we seeing uh, reactions at all from the master's forces? Like what I'm saying, uh, the... Are they happy or sad this is happening? Um, the, 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 I mean, I'm assuming that the, the barrier that was up there was that had come forward, that was preventing, preventing all sight beyond it, wasn't it? It was, yes. Uh, you could, you could, you could sort, sort of see the tree shimmering because it's such a huge structure, but everything else was distorted. Okay. It was pretty but much like looking into darkness. Okay. Uh, so with the creature having crept out of the lake, and therefore onto the shoreline, and actually, uh, with the level of the lake having gone down significantly, it's significantly more sure now available. Um, but yeah, has that pushed back the barrier such that can we see any evidence of uh, what the land is like behind where the barrier was? Uh, you can see what looks to be uh, dead grasslands and trees. Uh, that looks like they're almost petrified. Everything beyond the barrier looks as if life's been drained from it. Yeah, which is what we suspected that that was happening, but we uh, had no confirmation because no one could actually go beyond and test and fight the uh, And from what you guys have uh, remembered of this creature is it, it's basically uh, uh, the avatar of matter that comes and basically uh, return things to balance. Yep. I say we let it do its thing. It, it doesn't care what gets in its way. Again, I say we let it do its thing because I don't think we can do anything against that. <laughs> and what I say is, to make sure you're wisely saying that, ah, yes, it's, uh, it, it's going to be advantageous. It is likely to be able to force the master to force back. And uh, the. Beyond, it, it may continue actually beyond into the lands of uh, sin uh, to try and restore the world to what it was behind that area. Of course, in reality, thinking 
Hang on, there's nothing to eat back there, so it's not going to go that way. But hey, he can fill the uh, <laughs> provide hope, for Lord hope, but hope to those around him. Would also explain why even when the undead were tossed in the lake, they didn't come back. We're such a massive creature. It's, it's not actually believed to exist as far as history goes. History says nothing can be that big. Okay, it can't, it can't be real. <laughs> the story really can't go that time. Brain's just, just like gonna just, like sit back, back and kind of just watch, watch what happens because in her mind she's just, just like, like if I fight the thing I die, and, and in the worst, worst case scenario if this thing gets through, the worst case scenario is still I die. And <laughs> history says that you need to have artifacts to balance the five spheres to actually bring it down because you need to beat it with balance. It's the only thing it's vulnerable to. Yeah, um, the, the, the other top of the to like the top of like the mast and just kind of sit cross legged and watch <laughs> what happens. My, my concern with your with, with Rain's idea there about the worst case scenario is she's going to die. Um, in reality, it's probably best case scenario she'll die. Worst case scenario, <laughs> you kill one of the master's weapons. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Considering the fact that he put up a giant force field around it, that the Taras seemingly like needs to put effort in getting through. And basically that force field drains the life of whatever goes through it. Yeah. And he's something at actually heating the force field and damaging it. Yeah. So it, it does show that this creature is different than most of the things you've seen. <laughs> Which is probably why it's been known as the bird killer. <laughs> We haven't actually worked out yet or get confirmation as to which is the immovable object and which is the immovable force. Because at the moment, it's fairly evenly matched. Though you do see parts of the city appear on the shoreline. Ooh. What does the city look like? Uh, it looks very much devastated in pieces. There's no, nothing standing, even though the wharf. Uh, itself is cobbled together from broken pieces of other walls, oh. and now it's been stood on by this giant creature. Now, the city's just really sorry. Okay, so. Okay, so, uh, uh, so just, just confirming, uh, rain don't have any to comply with it. Yes. Yeah. Um, no one's tried to make a wish with the fixing game. Bing. <laughs> Uh, Dimitri is suggesting to Tran that uh, we may need to get a bit of you crawling out of the water. Uh, um, if only to have a better understanding of exactly what's happening, I'm not saying we're going to. Uh, the light can run out of walls. But uh, Dimitri is planning on uh, casting fly and flying closer to it, if nothing else, it means we're out of the way of any time away or things like that. It might also rock the ship a bit. Um, so I could have done that walls. Yeah. So, but would you want to have the fly on you as well? You could be trailing the fly. Um, well, that sounds... The main thing is offering to take you along. He doesn't do that very often, remember? Okay. Yep. Yeah, include me. Sounds okay. good. In that case, then, so the major will cast fly at four. But can can you give me free will? Like you control the flying until he stops using the spell. Okay. okay. I could cast invisibility on myself. You can fly, fly up there and like see what's going on. Uh, and yeah, well, you can still be in this party, so if they're attacked, attack, you're not. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, so obviously, uh, Dimitri, uh, take that there should be no, uh, um, rain yet, well, uh, but presumably, rain has definitely 
Yeah, but it's great to put work over the last couple of months of combat and fighting. Well, two, two months, months of fighting. You've, you've got, got to know rain pretty, pretty well. well. Uh, and presumably, uh, Redrian found something worthwhile in her. So she can't be all bad and all useless. Well, she, she knows um, more about technology, technology than uh, the, rest the rest of the party. party. Yep. So, um, so, yeah, so Dimitri's obviously thinking well there. Rain is not pleased to be flying on her, but uh, he's assuming they're coming with us. So, um, uh, but yes, Dimitri's still planning on staying at least two body lengths of the creature. Away from <laughs> up higher than the creatures that are here. So you do so know you might, might you might be in this flashback from whenever it breathes on the wall. You're in the splash zone. Uh, the the idea is certainly yes, it will be uh, aiming to get as close as you think it's safe-ish without having that effect. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and he'll recommend that, uh, to Callum and Rain not to fly too close to the sun. Don't be eager to come in. So they do have to go up close to uh, a mile to be above the creature. Okay, That's quite well, a fly. Probably not going to get that high in that case. But. <laughs> As stretched out, it's, it's extremely, extremely tall. tall. Mm -hmm. As it's using the barrier to brace itself to get up um, taller. Okay. He's going to, he's going to climb over the barrier. He's going to climb over the top. Well, it gives, well, it, gives it, it leverage to bash, bash against it as hard as possible if it's standing up against it. Uh... So, I will give you each uh, perception as you're flying along. Yeah. Because you get to see other things. one of my, like, featured, like, invisibilities. I can cast it three times per long rest. How long does it last until you turn it off? Um, okay. How long does it say? What's terminal velocity? Because I can soak 55. Terminal to velocity is normally 10d6. Okay, okay. So that's alright. So, I'm... So, it could be older if it's 20 uh, It may be 20. I haven't looked at the uh, current rule book. Yeah. They do no, change well, it. Well, 55 to soak would be fine. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's just, just the regular invisibility spell, so one hour. One hour. It's not, it's not too, too bad. bad. Okay, okay, so you, you find, find yourself up and above the lake. Everything really looks so small up here, except for the creature in the tree. It's like so this tiny little boat in the distance, distance that you've flown away from, yeah. and yet the, the creature's um, uh, tail makes that look like it's not even a scale. Okay. And I roll, like, perception as well? Yep. Yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen. And how did Trellin and Dimitri go trying to notice what's happening? That's what you've flown up to find out. Well, I rolled a seventeen, so I get twenty-seven. And how about Trellin? Uh, four plus <laughs> nine. Big <so> lizard. <laughs> Oh, I can see my house from here. <laughs> so as far as Trellin's concerned, he still can't get over the fact that there's this big freaking lizard uh, and this big freaking tree. Bigger than anything his brain can imagine. And there's a bigger curtain between them. Okay, so I will give a religion roll for both Dimitri and uh, Raining Ginkgo. As you are able to see what's actually happening. Ten. Ten. <laughs> another, another second take to make you, so that makes you 27 again. 
Okay, so, you're uh, you pick a kid still. Because you're going to make your job and everything, but you're going to get a perfect friend of mine. Well, there are other days you roll as well. <laughs> Just a little interesting. Well, I thought he's, he's got four skills and plus ten. Arcana, history, sex, and religion. Which is the one you probably did. Yeah. So, so, what you're seeing here really does look to be a battle of entropy versus matter uh, and hard to tell which one's actually stronger because the creature is condensed and the wall seems to be spread out okay so it's so it's kind of like a like you can hold your breath along this challenge uh, and whatever's uh, feeding the barrier probably can't last very long but will probably last longer than the most things. Okay. Um, uh, and with Dimitri looking at it, you can actually see uh, that on the other side of the barrier, uh, there are mechanized constructs uh, trying to attack the creature, but the creature hasn't even noticed. You can see what, what looks like a entire arsenal of weapons being fired at it and having no effect. Mm -hmm. But they are apparently going through the barrier, effectively. They are going through the barrier. You've seen uh, just one shot from one of these weapons uh, completely take the life from an entire ship. He just hits it and every, everyone on the ship dies. And it hasn't, it's been hit by many of these without even noticing. Uh, what's the big thought of, okay, we've got matter and entropy Mostly imbalanced at the present time, fighting each other. If the nature was trying to throw some force up against the barrier at the same time, would that likely fit the balance? It may, but it may also um, uh, trap you. Yes. Because uh, thought itself do doesn't, the stone itself doesn't have a similar power to either. And you may be uh, absorbed by one or the other. So what about fire? Energy, but a bit of fun, but not, how much energy you've got available to... So is that a distinction between energy and... So en energy is the uh, sphere itself, fire is a component of the sphere. Uh, okay, so if you, if you attack with fire, effectively, when we're talking about matter and entropy against each other at the moment, effectively bringing in energy into that yeah. uh, and it came from water and it's, it's radiant damage that it was doing to the wall is a re representation of energy itself because that's one of the uh, elemental effects of energy so it does represent more than one element itself but apparently not so much uh, representation of thought so far probably not unless of course uh, uh, controlled destruction. So, the demonic the, the control, control may give it the thought. Yeah. Uh, so, from what, from what we can see in the combat at the moment, yes, we've definitely got uh, water, energy, and matter up against entropy. Um, but, it's, but the things you understand is, it's not clear the thought is currently involved, is that right? It might well be, because there's no obvious uh, focus of the thought actually being involved. Not that you can see. <sighs> Which is probably the reason. That's right. And, and, but also, I didn't think so it's that much more reason that Dimitri's going to be a hero and get close enough to choose the, the uh, yes diamond. <laughs> Um. Uh. Okay, Dimitri's going around to fly uh, well off to the side of where the, uh, the creature has um, with surface in the lake. Like, but, but actually, you're going to fly so you can actually get to the shore. Mm -hmm. Um, on the idea that hey, you can't be flying forever. Um, the, the, he will warn. Well, no, I'm not going to 
I might, yeah. Though I will, I will state oh, that uh, things you do notice that uh, creature, flying creatures within its vicinity plummet to the ground. Uh, What's the distance? Can I? Yeah, what, 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 what could this triangulation or something? Uh, give me a uh, engineering check, which is uh, one of the other skills in the game. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a plus one, I think, um, because of Red Dream Star. Yep. But you've also probably got your attribute modifier too. Like you may not be proficient in engineering. No, intelligence. Oh, you know. So, uh, the good thing the good thing about the rules is you can use any skill with any attribute as long as you can justify it. It's the justification is where I say, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, or, no, that doesn't seem to fit. Uh, so, you, he could uh, basically say he's using uh, the wisdom of his, uh, you know, Teachings oh, to yeah. uh, uh, connect the uh, trajectories and all that sort of stuff, and then yeah, use wisdom as his modifier instead of intelligence. All right, so plus four, um, twenty. For twenty. Okay, you estimate it to be within two hundred and four hundred feet of the creature. All right, so I'll stay away from that. That, that, that's right. The red cube is not playing that game with me. I have to pretty much get a point out. So, <laughs> at least, not while he's flying. So, when he gets down to the land, then it's a case of, uh, well, he's probably going to have to get close enough to the the uh, yeah. the beam of light that the, when he's used it in the past. The guy didn't think he said but he's really hoping for the end of the the boot up and he's really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and you, 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 you do, do see that the things it does bring down, it, they, they don't get, get to glide, glide down, they plummet. Yeah, like meteors. Which uh, uh, does make you uh, think of the uh, anti-thought style of um, skills. Which, which does uh, help it fight most creatures, because if it tries to fly near it, look. <laughs> Uh, it's designed to go up against um, more than one element. Yeah. 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 Um, but so basically, the basic intent is to uh, fly around on the side, uh, land on the, the shoreline, because it doesn't look like there's any enemy actually uh, left on this side of the barrier on the shoreline, correct? That's, That's correct. correct. Yep. Um, and then, <coughs> definitely uh, aiming not to draw attention to himself. Uh, he will be aiming to uh, swiftly try and move uh, within a few hundred, maybe about 500 feet of the, the creature's uh, battle, but closer to the barrier. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, when you're thinking that, okay, the moment might be right or definite enough, we will try and activate the edge diamond and provide some extra impetus into the battle. But obviously, he's more than happy for the creature to be uh, significantly weakened if it looks like we think the barrier is hanging out at the time. Like <laughs> as long as both forces are <laughs> wishing each other down equally, <laughs> to make you happy to stand back and watch. Um, but if it looks like the, uh, the, the master is gaining that, uh, uh, like it getting ahead of the game, then uh, Dimitri will try and watch from Jens Diamond to try and rebalance the field. Okay. So I'll give and you... And probably die doing it, but how easy if you everyone knows that. Give you each an initiative roll to see how you go when you're acting. Well, you each get to do an initiative roll to see how you go what's, what's about, about to happen. Oh. Uh, is that a one? No, it's a, it's a four, but it's just a nine. With, with my init plus initiative. 
I got 15 for a total of 19 for initiative. And how about Trevor? Uh, plus 10. 22. 22, that's a nice roll. I get a plus 10, so. Because I took the uh, alert thing. Always oh, comes in handy. No, good, good thing he doesn't, doesn't have a huge initiative. <laughs> so, so is Fallon continuing to watch for the air at the present time? And or rain? Well, or they... Is there any point to adding energy to your... That's on your, on your personal, personal belief there. So Dimitri hasn't said anything about it because he's of the opinion that uh, no one else in the party has enough energy to make a difference. Whether that's right or wrong, and it's going to be added to Dimitri, but yes. He went on the theory that it's only Gems uh, uh, Diamond and the artifact that controls in that sense. That uh, potentially potential gives uh, Dimitri the, the chance to tip the balance. Uh, but that could not be suggested that uh, Trellin shouldn't try. Um, and I mean, uh, <laughs> have you worked out whether or not we do stuff? Has anything can talk? <laughs> uh, no, well, I can do a war fight. Oh, okay, yeah. Which does introduce fire into the equation, as the staff is a tool of fire. Yes. Okay, so as you get yourself ready to act, uh, you see the entire barrier uh, shimmer and break away and seem to condense into the giant tree you see before you. Then it's Trellon's turn. What does Trellon want to do? For the first time, you can actually see past the barrier. I'd like to use Wall of Fire, which costs four charges, and... What can you do if you can use it? I don't know. My player's handbook is in with my daughter. <laughs> the um, the uh, cat was playing with the tags. Well, I'm sure the tags are wonderful. <laughs> Well, yes. Okay, yes. But I don't. I don't want to wake her up because she's um, she's got to get up at um, seven to get to work. Well, it's also possibly it wouldn't necessarily matter what the, the standard cast of your spell is because the artifact might have different capabilities. Uh, yes. So all I've got is wall of fire, whatever that is. Okay. So the wall of fire uh, and seems to go further than you think you could do it. You, where do you want it to go? I want it to pass through the tree. Okay, you see the uh, wall go straight uh, from you directly through the tree and continue on beyond your sight. Okay, cool. And then the staff shatters. What? <laughs> it's... <laughs> the staff has 10 charges. The staff yeah. regains 1d6 plus 4 extended charges after a long rest. If you extend yeah. the last charge, roll a d20. On a 1, the staff blackens, crumbles into cinders, and is destroyed. But it's not a staff of fire. What? It can do, it can do a wall of fire, but it's not a staff of fire. And the point being that it's probably, uh, even if that was the normal thing for the, the artifact of reading and stuff, um, it still certainly has acted uh, much more powerfully than it was expected to do so. So, yeah. So, do I still get the wall of fire? The wall of fire is still there. You see, it, it has burnt through with uh, what appears to be a holy flame. Okay, nice. 
as you, you think you'll uh, hit the ley line and basically send holy flame along the ley line. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Throughout the multiverse. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, sure there are places, places like Asgard, Asgard that wouldn't mind too much. <laughs> Ragnarok <laughs> come early this year. <laughs> okay, so that, was, that, that brings, brings us to Dimitri, Dimitri who, who just witnessed, witnessed what you consider to be the impossible. Hi. <laughs> that guy you don't want the seven digits of supporting? <laughs> Well, it's, well, it's nice, nice to, you know, uh, get, get that, that list, list of the impossibles, impossibles for today. Yeah, God, we, we, we can have breakfast soon. It's always got another impossible kind of way. I can delete like that. Right, okay, I'm going to ask first of all, which is what have we seen on now the barriers being uh, withdrawn into the tree? Uh, what do we see of the, the master's forces? The, uh, the, the mechanized uh, siege weapons and things like that that were uh, apparently attacking the beast. So the, the, these siege weapons look to be the size of castles, and uh, the energy that they're firing at it are, are basically bigger than uh, the ship you're sailing on. Uh, so anything that came your way. Uh, if, if you're, you're in the, the center, center of the shot, shot you wouldn't have a chance of getting away from it. No. And they, they, they basically seem to have no effect on this creature. Yeah. How many of these key weapons are we seeing? At this point, you're seeing hundreds. Okay. Have any of them been affected or been in the path of the, this wall of fire that Carl put up? A couple of them have, and they have crumbled with that fire. Um, and how far away effectively is it spreading from its present time? I'm assuming at least several hundred feet. You're looking long. at probably half a mile away to a mile. Yeah, no um, As you can see, some of the branches are almost above you. And how close is the, the, the nearest of the key weapons? Probably within seven to eight hundred feet. Hmm. And are we seeing any uh, other forces of the master milling around, or is it effectively just the? At this distance, uh, you're sure there's lots of little ants moving around these things. It's just that the scale makes it very hard to determine these tiny things amongst these huge, massive structures. You could probably fit a army on each of these um, towers you can see with uh, close to a thousand of them in view. That could be anywhere between a uh, hundred thousand to a million soldiers just massed at this city itself. And that doesn't, that doesn't count the forces that are actually already going more from scattered for like being held back by the other thing. Um, you think that this is probably the strength of his forces held here in reserve? while he's just sending his weaker forces to harass each side. If he could control the lake, then he could just go straight across it. Uh, <clears throat> well. I guess we're not going to get another opportunity to at least... Uh, uh, make some impact on the vice's forces if they manage to eliminate the BC. Uh, Dimitri is going to go for. Uh, so, yeah, so both of them are down, so they don't need to fly anymore. Checking um, uh, invisibility. Uh, even concentration, yep. So. <coughs> Um, the is going to go for a cut in the ability on itself and start maneuvering uh, closer to the uh, these uh, siege weapons mm -hmm. um, in an attempt to get them within range of uh, at least uh, 
firewalls and or uh, the edge diamond and things like that. I'm going to get paid and run over and take out a few of them. I'm basically, hopefully the, uh, the beastie might actually step on a few when he's trying to get up towards the tree again anyway, so okay. to me he's going to be making there trying to mop up the So as you start um, moving there, you hear the beastie breathe in, and then another burst of insanely bright light, this time not reflected back at you, arcs out in front of you as you see the equivalent of... Uh, uh, 60 dice of damage done to all the structures uh, in your site uh, up to the tree. Well, unfortunately, that's actually not that many hmm. because even though the beast knew what's going to be reflected, when he heard the beast is winning you, he was still hit the deck and uh, <laughs> trying to work out how to can throw him into the cloud. <laughs> so, um, considering you've been in the sea breeze and all, that cough that you've had is completely gone as your lungs have dried out for the first time since you've been on the lake. Oh, all that hot air in the uh, vicinity. It's like he's been out in the desert just like that. Uh, and the, so, I've had it though, when he looks up, he can clearly get the station with left. And uh, you also see that the flame uh, that... Uh, Trellin had sent into the tree has risen uh, to uh, a great height as it zooms off into the distance. It's basically added to what Trellin had done. Ah. Okay, that brings us to Rain Inca. Okay, so I'm guessing the current goal is to destroy the tree. Right. You're not sure if you can destroy the tree. Okay. It's, it's reputed to be the root of the world. Okay. That doesn't that that seems like something we should destroy. We're, we're the creature that you're next to is supposed to be the heart of the world. Again, something... Hmm. So, so when, when the, the root meets the heart, what happens? <laughs> we are in a situation has, has where the heart is going to be wrong. Uh, probably not. You've probably still got at least uh, another uh, 10 to 20 minutes before that runs out. Okay. So, from what we can see, like, the, like, like, all, like, the big bad evil guys' forces are still, like, down there and stuff. You can see um, more creatures of unusual shape and size than you've ever seen in your life. Hmm. Most of them uh, looks like they they were once more than one other creature. Okay. So he probably uh, works to blend uh, the dead into his uh, constructs and forces. Which is pro probably why something that breathes radiant energy is pretty much what, what he wants to see right now. <laughs> okay, so are any of them like making a move to attack the draws? Like all of them. They're, they're basically been firing on it constantly. You basically hear the sounds of uh, huge explosions going off as it hits it. Okay. Um. And from this side, you see that some of its scales have blackened from the attack. It's just not slowed it down. It seems to be angry. Okay. Uh, it worked in a bad mood, unfortunately. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it's saying it's not directed at you, so that's a good thing. Well, story, stories talk of its um, hunger, not of its anger. So, uh, a titan throwing a, temp a temper tantrum would probably be worse than a titan just make getting its fill. How much damage has been like? How's the Taras like looking again? Uh, it's got blackened scales, but history doesn't actually say it's possible to kill one. Okay. Hmm. Is there any way I can annoy the enemy forces? <laughs> or does that make this ways. more difficult for them? In many ways, you could call them. Go, go, Martin. Well, does Pikachu? Or, or I can't remember it. Uh, <laughs> um, 
um, have a artifact. No. Not at this stage, but we'll have one next session. Okay. So, sorry to distract you. Yeah, that could do. Because the artifact is uh, toe of Tarrasque. <laughs> Shaving of Tarrasque. <laughs> Probably if we win, and you, you collect your toe as an artifact. Let's go, Mark. You were planning something? Yes. So, uh, what? No, I. I, I I wanted to, to, to defer to. Um, well, the char character has been dabbling with technology, so we'll probably have a few technological gizmos. Just that nothing that can be used as a weapon. So all, all these fantastic things that can do these nice and wonderful, you know, helpful little doodads. Yeah, I was actually like planning on messaging you about that after the session because I have a few ideas. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, how far away am I from, like, enemy forces? They would be spread. You could probably hit uh, enemies within 60 to 80 feet. As you can see, what appears to be hordes of uh, goblins, orcs, hobgoblins, okay. uh, strange men. Uh, well, most men are strange, but hey, this one's just a stranger. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like... To cast gust of wind to hopefully like knock some people, some of the enemy forces prone. So when the Trask attacks next, gust of wind's always a nice thing to drop on people. Best on boats, but hey, it works on other things as well. Okay, so you can concentrate on it for a minute. You basically make it hard for them to do stuff and blow fires in their yeah. direction. Yeah. Yep, that would work quite well. Um, and they also need to make a strength saving throw or be pushed 15 feet away. It's a good chance that most of them will be pushed. Okay. Because they're, they're, they're basically not thinking about uh, uh, holding their ground at the moment. Because <laughs> they wouldn't know what's causing the gust of wind. Hmm. It's just well, the <laughs> okay. Just one oh, good. So you get that spell off, and you'll be concentrating on that for a minute, being able to throw things around with wind. Yeah. Of course, if you make them go up in the air, then they get slammed into the ground again. I would like to do that. Still yeah. invisible, so they don't know a tiny thing. <laughs> would they even be able to see me? <laughs> Not easily. <laughs> Because uh, that, that is technically you're not attacking a uh, creature, you're yeah. causing an effect. Yeah, I'm causing the wind to blow <laughs> that way <laughs> into the flames. Okay, so you see many creatures hit the wall of radiant and just turn to dust. Hmm. And that dust gets sucked along the line of the flame. <laughs> Okay, so then uh, uh, something interesting happens at the tree. You see the branches of the tree seem to split apart uh, either, either side of where the radiant fire is going through. Yeah. And what appears to be a uh, massive phantasmal dragon uh, rise up out of it. Which uh, has a voice that Trellin has heard fairly often. It's pretty extraordinary, but carry on. So you know that voice that has been calling you Wave Dancer? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's that voice. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, no. And it uh, seems to cast some sort of spell at the Tarrasque. Okay, so... Oh. And you see the Tarrasque go flying over your heads. <laughs> I did uh, say to some of them that the uh, Master himself is the equivalent of the hero that sends the Tarrasque flying into space. When you roll for 19 on the attack roll, or the spell effect of it is. 
as you see it go flying um, out of your sight behind you. Yeah. That's huge. Right, just kind of... <laughs> like, like, as, as it, it flies, flies off, just like... Just... And then you hear this a massive bang as it hits the water. Oh. And you're hearing that from miles away. Oh, and she just kind of... Oh. On the plus side, uh, it might all flood and like effectively uh, put, put a tidal wave around the lake to, to take out the excerpt that the army has been attacking the north and south. Unfortunately, also the uh, west and the east. So <laughs> Acheros has been a couple of west. Uh, the, the worst one will be uh, Bronzedale because they weren't building the wall. But Akoros fought Angelberry and fought Lakeside had. They were turning Akoros into another fort to fortify the city. Mm-hmm. They've been spending years doing that. The party has been witnessing from various groups of the walls are bigger than the last time we were here. <laughs> and Tony said back to the fact that, well, certainly on the scouts of Pendlebury, uh, at least the Garrett army was. Mostly contained in the fort, whereas the army on the facing were stuck out on that narrow strip of land between the lake and the, uh, the plateau. So, um, it's on the plus side, we've certainly impacted on the, uh, the Marshall Gardens. <laughs> Negative will be how much impact has been on the Gaffigan Gardens. And whether we need to buy and get back off the West Indies plane. Well, it's your first glimpse of what the Master himself can do. Yeah. They've not actually seen him act in person before. Oh. Well, we've not actually seen him before. Yeah. So he's just a giant dragon. He, he did. He appeared as a phantasmal dragon that uh, actually managed to strike the tourist. Hard oh, enough, he's sent to fly. Okay, that's terrifying. And he did that by crawling out of the world tree. Well, so terrifying. Uh, but the wall of flame is actually still up, is it? It's still up, and you see it spreading into the distance still. <laughs> you may have uh, caused him a bit of a setback. In what way? Uh, he may not be able to press his forces for a while now. Yeah, um, is that a good thing? Well, it means that you have a, a relief and you can go off and chase uh, potentially the other shards of the crown if that's what you want to do, or other things. Okay. Uh, uh, Dimitri's going to use the, uh, the, the initial confusion over the uh, loss of the task to... Uh, having got close enough towards the, some of the, um, the siege weaponry that the Marshal was using to attack the track, to try and send the fireball through uh, enhanced by the, the like if using the using the M diamond as a focus, to uh, send the fireball through to actually try and at least take out a couple of these extra. Uh, Feed weapons? Right. Hey. <laughs> one left, you do one less. <laughs> okay. So, as you send your fireball, uh, you seem to lose control of your fireball. Okay. So, so you still keep going away from me? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So the fireball as you throw it fragments into uh, many little shards and as far as you can see it streaks off in bolts of lightning all across uh, the fields as far as you can see. Uh huh. Don't you seem to have any effect where, where the bolt actually end up landing? Uh, you, you believe you've cast a uh, form of meteor storm. It's what I meant to do, <laughs> as uh, bolts of lightning strikes the field for uh, many miles away from you. Okay. Uh, again. As you feel, as you feel the gem in your hand go dark. 
At least it didn't get away that stuff. So we might not <laughs> Well, you didn't target the tree. Oh, that's right. So, um, and... Okay. But where uh, you, you have uh, more of an understanding now that artifacts are far more powerful in the lands the master controls because those elements have uh, are so few and far between that they come through like a tidal wave. Uh huh. Yep. He's basically draining the line from the Okay. And they basically come through like a flood. This is probably why most things, things that come, come here don't go back. Uh, well, and then having cut that, that off, to be you think, of, well, not even my game like you right now. So, <laughs> trying to get it, guys. And as you guys start to turn around, you start to see the walls start to slowly creep out from the tree again. Now that it, now it's no longer got a big. Uh, to rest, but it does have a slight shimmer to it as you think you can see, still see the flame through it. You, you may have left a permanent flame on the other side of the uh, wall. Could I possibly like direct my gust of wind to like make the flame bigger? <laughs> you can try, but it, but it is more than a mile away from you. Yeah, that's out of range. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's all my, that's all my job. You feel good about it. Uh, how quickly does it look like the wall is standing out from the, or the curtain is standing out from the tree? Probably a bit hard to judge the distance so far, but that would be a factor. And the second one is, uh, what could you ask to it? <laughs> it's disappeared. <laughs> It, it, it got thrown. It got thrown so far. You didn't see it land. You just. Oh, okay. So it, it went beyond the. the, the, the it didn't just get gone back into the lake. It's gone actually beyond the lake. It, it may have been thrown uh, miles back into the lake. Because remember, the island itself is about fifty to a hundred miles from shore. Yeah. yeah. And if so it had been thrown that far, it would definitely be out of sight. Yeah, no, that's right. But, but yeah, the, the initial trajectory. We assumed it was still within the it didn't get to be on the lake. Is that right? It, it, it wasn't was angling up, it was more angling over. Okay, yeah. Um Worst, worst case, case it landed in the middle of Durkin and then well there's stuff. <laughs> oh well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then there's potentially the, there's stuff anyway, but how far I've got to on the idea of the beast might be going, yeah, well, I guess it's not going west anymore. Let's try it. Um. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the beast will really aim to return to where Strata is, to four weeks old and was last time before him. Um, and, uh, if rain also happens to be in the vicinity, although I think rain is a bit more like trouble, like the big thing currently is. I'm sure rain will grab hold of anything that goes past. Sorry? I'm sure rain will grab hold of anything that goes past. You're playing fast, I'm on you. you. <laughs> um, but yes, the big thing working on the idea of uh, when you get back to work with color, uh, to Drop his invisibility and cast another fourth that will fly uh, because uh, either way we definitely want to be moving <laughs> either both away from where the church is standing and over the likely tidal way caused by the splash of the, uh, the terrain. And you can hear the rumble in the distance. Though it may the tidal wave may not hit here for three or four days. Oh god. Is um because I'm concentrating on the fire. Yep. Does that conflict with the flying spell as well? Uh, you don't concentrate on the flying spell. Someone else does. That's the benefit of having someone else cast it on you. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. You you have all the fun without any of the obligation. That's right. Your control is effect on you. 
but I'm the one yep. that actually maintains the spell. So. Okay. So, so Dimitri, Dimitri gets, gets the grey hairs for keeping you flying. <laughs> so you are able to make it back to a halfling boat while they're busily trying to point towards the tidal wave. <laughs> um, hey. Because, because they don't want to end up thrown back into the Masters of Darkness. Um, okay, so... That's where Gust of Wind is fantastic. Yeah, it gives yeah, yeah I was going to say, I cast Gust of Wind to try and help us. So what? Now, I keep forgetting the name, sorry. Um, Pikachu. Um, Rain. Rain will work. Um, uh... So for the invisibility spell and the gust of wind spell, is there any conflict between those concentration effects? Uh, no. Or is it inherent ability? Um, invisibility is an inherent ability to pixies. Cool. No worries. Thank you. Is gust of wind actually concentration? Gust of wind is a concentration, but pixies have been known to also attack while invisible. Yeah, that's right. I think we had no It's also handy because we're yeah. wrong. <laughs> okay, so with a couple of other um, spell casters, you're able to maintain a gust of wind, uh, which is a good thing you can actually do it as a ritual to keep it going. Yeah. And then speed your boat uh, for the next few days towards the tidal wave. <laughs> Do we want to go towards the tidal wave? Well, you want to go as far as you can so you don't get blown backwards onto the shores of Akasoli. Because by the time the wave hits there, the wall of death will be back up. Right. More than likely, anyway. So, I mean, I expect that it's... Uh, part of the goal might be... rather Because the tidal wave is probably going to come down to you. Uh, spreading out in multiple directions. <coughs> so there might be some element of, hey, let's see if we can get probably south or north of the impact site of the, um, uh, the giraffe and then surf the tidal wave, but not actually surf it away from the, the master's terrain in the west. Going south, going south or north, but not instead. But the southern shore is the best bet for that. Um, so the further you get out on the lake, the lower the tidal wave will be. Absolutely. It's based on depth. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, Dimitri provides advice to the, uh, the captain of, uh, hey, this is the effective effect. And I said, presumably the captain will think, what the hell does he know? Even though obviously he tells us it's actually true and accurate and it's all, it's all good. <laughs> the captain then does whatever it was appropriate in that sense. You did find out that the chef had said they should um, go for the centre of the lake. I tried. Sorry, the, 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 the halfling chef had said uh, go for the centre of the lake, which is why they had started down that path. Yeah. The closer to the shore they are, the higher the waves will be. Yeah. So a tidal wave may just feel like a big uh, wave. In the middle of the air. Well, in the middle of the It can still be devastating, but as long as you know what you're facing, it's a lot easier to deal with. Well, it also yeah. probably makes a positive idea of this. Uh, depending on how close you are to the actual impact site of where the terrestrial is, the, uh, you might still be dealing with the crest of that displacement of water. There is but, that too. By the time we get in there, I'm thinking that it's going to be that, that the water will be down again. So. And presumably, uh, most of the force of the, the direction of the wave is actually going to be heading more towards the, the east of the shore uh, in line with the way that the tariff has been pushed. So, uh, hopefully, we'll get through. Uh, Dimitri is certainly going to have a fly spell ready to go to uh, temporarily step off the deck of the ship <laughs> if it becomes important. <laughs> well, hey, the master would have gotten quite a few benefits out of flinging the terrestrial in that direction. Okay. Uh, hopefully, uh, we did there was an impact. 
And yes, so the, the, the question is going to be, yes, what does the two have to do next? So it did take two uh, two days for you to actually reach the tidal wave going out onto the uh, lake itself, and it was like a roller coaster for a while. Okay. It probably uh, raised your ship about fifty to one hundred feet above the normal lake level, which is um, significant for in the center of the lake. Yeah. I I think that uh, oh, no. uh, I, I, I was thinking that, 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 uh, to make sure that we had the extra sending stones to keep in contact with other members of the the, uh, the Darren forces, but I, then I meant that I know the other sending stone that the has got actually is the King of Destiny. Yes, he's got two. One, one to, to a ship and one to a king, king who we promised you'd help if the king ever needed it. Uh, and then the, the king, king needs it. It's a bit late to run out of it there. So, yeah, so I guess uh, if we have any way of communicating with the shoreline, uh, possibly even if it's going to be seven or four flags passed from ship to ship, somewhat, um, then. Uh, we will definitely aim to uh, warn out the, uh, the forces on the shoreline in all directions that, uh, yes, tidal wave conditions is likely to hit the shores in uh, two to four days, depending on exactly where they are around the shore. Um, what do you think the worst of it probably hit the um, eastern shore long before you saw the wave? Yeah, no, 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 no. The, the, the point there is that we would have been able to make communication from as soon as we started heading, as soon as we got back on the ship type of stuff. It would have been a case of trying to provide as much warning as possible if we had any way of communication um, uh, in that direction. Um, but if we don't, well, we don't. But I would like to think that. So. Well, the halflings do have flags, and if enough birds, you can do quite a distance of flag waving. It's the equivalent of telegraph. Admittedly, <laughs> admittedly the, the, the formation of the fleet might have been disrupted by the recent events. So, whether they were within the site of doing seven four to each other, might be a challenge. Well, most of them would have stuck to the southern side of the lake because uh, they have tried to avoid the centre of the lake for most of the uh, combat. Yeah. It was very uh, disturbing for most of them that the lake centre seemed, seemed to move. <laughs> so you do pass the tidal wave on the fourth day of the month and manage to reach Fort Azenberry by the sixth. I just checked actually to make sure he does have a sending amongst these uh, standard spells. Probably would be a, a, a ritual now in that sense, but the, um, so yeah, he hasn't got, he wouldn't, he hasn't necessarily got memorized it today, although actually probably got memorized it most days on the fact that it was probably flow the communication between six and shore. Um, so, so he will actually at least uh, let the, um, let people know of the, the danger of the tidal wave and the uh, uh, entry of a third party into the conflict. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so by the time you reach Fort Azenberry, you find out that the tidal wave went about 30 miles inland, which is quite significant, and then sucked itself back into the lake. Um, those that uh, got, got brought, brought back, back into the lake generally didn't, didn't return. return. Yep. Uh, Sounds about right. Luckily that, that the fortifications were up for most of the places along the lake, so the, the, the citizens, citizens were mostly saved. saved. But, but the weird thing is, is everywhere where the uh, lake uh, returned from uh, seemed to be far more fertile afterwards, bringing up vegetation that hadn't been seen for years. Sometimes never been seen. Uh, 
the Egyptian Yellow Sensor on the southern edge of the lake, whether that uh, uh, extends the forest and the boundary of the forest a bit closer to the lake. And, uh, and the Etruvian <laughs> clean it all until everyone who comes near. That's right, the Etruvian has become a bit more... <laughs> that that, that uh, entry, that, that passageway along the south of the lake becomes a little bit narrow. And... Uh, well, has there been any uh, sign or word of the two asks activity? In the last few days? It, has it has not, not been, been seen, seen since it was um, sent flying. Uh, is the island uh, in the lake still, or is the island gone? Well, no, no, no one, one really has gone, gone near the island, the island uh, since, since that time. time. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is, is quite, quite a few, few miles, miles from the shipping, shipping lane, lane. being yeah. uh, 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 24, 24 miles, miles from the shipping, shipping lane. lane. Yeah. Uh, 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 the, the, the island's not visible when you look at it through, look behind you in the mirror. Doesn't, doesn't seem to have the same pool that it had before. Okay. It's it's there. It is there. It's possible that it's um, been put to sleep for a time again. Uh, yeah. Good news, bad news. <laughs> always good news, always bad news. Can I, like, re- research, like, why the water seemed to, like, make the land more fertile, more than, like, water should make the land more fertile? You'd assume that because it's got a, a creature of life in it. Yeah, okay. It probably, it probably is blood mixed with the water, making the water far more potent than normal water. I would like to take a sample of the water. Possibly a tool that can help us later. Possibly. It's believed that the blood of the tourists can revive anything. Okay, okay yeah, I definitely take, like, a vial of the water. The, Is there the any blood diluted. I can see? No. Can't see any blood, but it, it may have been diluted enough that it's actually just uh, brought plants back, back to life. Okay, okay I'm, I'm still going to take a vial. <laughs> It'll probably, probably allow you to grow plants very quickly. Is there a way of me using survival to filter it or concentrate it? Possibly. With, With a, a, a good, good alchemist, alchemist set? Yeah. Um, I probably don't have that. Then you probably need a couple of gallons of water. I have a herbalism kit, is that it? Not, Not quite, quite the, the same, same, but, but it will help you work out, out what vegetation, vegetation was used for that had sprung up. Okay. There are there things, things here that, that uh, your, your research, research has said uh, died, died thousands, thousands of years ago. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, so when we get, get to Pendleberry uh, type stuff, um, is there effectively the young Viet army that had been attacking Pendleberry? Did it get, did it get washed away by the, the tidal wave? Even though it's got a huge effect on the back side, it's not like the, the greatest effect was to the east, but particularly the south and north and west also received uh, very pink tides at the very least. Um, did that have an impact on the undead army that had been? Attacking them down south? I'm just comparing the dates. Because it's actually quite amusing how close the dates are. Uh, I'll I, I, I certainly, like I say, not remembering the dates directly at the time, but I'm thinking, well, presumably this event happened after, it actually happened after what the, uh, we dealt with in Tuesday night, because. We probably would have known about it on Tuesday last night if it had happened already. Or hadn't happened at the. Or, yes. Well, from, from Tuesday happened, night's perspective. If it happened during the time of Tuesday night, then the problem was that they would have heard about it. Uh, communication, communication is still, still very spotty. spotty. You've, You've actually got to know the person, person you're communicating with for it to get through, and then it's not guaranteed. Mm hmm. 
So about, so about the time, time it happened, happened um, they, 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 they were in pitch battle, battle for uh, quite, quite a few, few weeks. weeks. So, so from, from your perspective, perspective uh, and from their perspective, the uh, Undead Army, Army is still, still there as you're um, basically, basically um, going, going there, there, but they've been held at bay by, by uh, the, the siege equipment, equipment as, as the curtain uh, is not protecting them. And now you know why the curtain is not protecting them. Yeah. They didn't know that at the time. Because the government had continued to move forward with the Amasa's forces and it just stopped. Um, uh, but yeah, so but it was like on that southern side there, yes, there was a bit of a, a high tide than usual, but it wasn't so much a tidal wave that hit the southern side, right? Yeah, it wasn't a tidal wave that hit the southern side. Okay. It was just a, a high water level. It didn't um, completely flood or pull things away. But the master's uh, uh, veil didn't uh, continue all the way to the river. Well, I mean, exactly. From when we were out in the lake type stuff, we could still only see the veil in the distance anyway, so yeah. everything we didn't have any in front of the veil, so. so um, it suggested that you return to Aquaros and try to uh, uh, research, uh, research some, some other things, things that, that might help. help. Well, Dimitri certainly came on that trip. He made him that suggestion of the much of the idea. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, uh, we're not, not going to be able, able to do anything directly, obviously. Yeah. The, 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 the lake still needs to be patrolled, but uh, hopefully, much of the forces of the uh, the master's naval forces have been uh, so eliminated. You'd think, think it'd probably take, take him at least a year to rebuild his naval fleet. fleet. Um, and uh, so, so, yeah, so, so certainly Dimitri's wanting to get back and do more, more get, get, get to a good library and, and do more research. research. Uh, it's happening. He's been cold and wet long enough, thanks very much. <laughs> and at least, at least that costs me a lot. Not that the Dimitri would ever uh, bother with others with such trifles. That's because he doesn't really want to get a hug from the dragon, because that's how we feel. Imagine, Imagine this eight foot tall uh, draconic creature, basically, basically that giving he gives people hugs to uh, heal them. Oh. Well, he, he, he believes it's a, 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 a full service. service. He's, He's got, got a healthy spirit, spirit, not just a body. Uh, in the few days that it takes to get the pendle berry, mm -hmm. uh, does Yem's diamond? Uh, does the blackness fade? It, it does, does not. It seems to be uh, uh, faded. You have a feeling it might not gain power again until the next full moon. A lot of these things, uh, when they're when they're drained, uh, don't come back quickly. I don't know exactly. It more the confirmation. Yes. Well, it hasn't come back immediately. He still has reason to hope that it has been. It will be. It, it can restore uh, the recover, unlike presumably retrieve stuff. <laughs> At this stage, uh, Trellin can still feel the connection to the fire going through the ley lines on the other side of the world. Hey, obviously, it's not it. well, uh, as, as, long as long as you concentrate, you maintain it. <laughs> He's got good power to concentration. He's been concentrating for six days. Well, I don't, I don't have many other options as far as concentration goes. And I don't have to sleep because I'm an elf. You see, he can just sit and rest and concentrate. Hmm. I meditate on keeping, keeping the thing active. This <laughs> is so so when he starts snoring at your work. But do you want to keep it active? What are my target options? I mean, okay, clearly something that they say. If, if Dimitri realizes that uh, the, the fire is being maintained, 
Yeah, we'll work, have you thought about is that actually an advantage or is it something that it becomes the potential of the master can use the power source? Or like, is, it, is it likely to be opposed to the master's processes at that point in time? It may be causing harm or it may be helping. It's hard to tell from this distance. But undead, which is his main force, would not work well with it. But then it didn't seem the undead was particularly around the, the, the undead were his, uh, his shock troops and his, uh, his uh, meat grinder troops anyway, weren't they? Did it seem that the, the siege weapons were being maintained by undead? Or well, the siege weapons seem to be, the siege weapons were affected by the radiant energy. So, so he, he could, could be, be causing, causing continual, continual upset, upset on the other side. side. Or he could be providing additional power to uh, recover <laughs> things more quickly. That's, That's always the risk either way. way. How does Trellon which, which feels the more likely option, like, or even if it's like potentially both. Does Trellon feel he's, he's causing, causing pain, pain or um, help to the master? I don't. I, I can really concentrate and hopefully I can tell you. Now, as a player, what do you think Trellon believes? Hey, the master might be telling you. Well, he talks in the back of your head. <laughs> well, it, it seems the, the, the wave runner. Uh, what, what, well, the wave dancer, dancer has become, become his nemesis, nemesis now. Hmm. Well, I, I think that the wall of fire is awesome. So, yeah, carry on. But I'll, I'll bring it back so it's a bit closer. But you can't control where it goes, unfortunately. You can only keep it running. I can't do it. It's a case of it. You can keep it on or off. Or, uh, you can leave it on or turn it off once. Alright, I'll, I'll keep it going and um, bring it home or whatever. Okay, so we'll finish up this section with you reaching the city of Akoros and having options available to you there as you can meet up with your benefactor. And next might session, have, you might have a new start for you. And see what happens in the next session. Uh, as that, that was the introduction to what's happening in the war. Nice. Basically, Basically, a lot of bad things are happening. Things are happening. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you can't, can't control or direct it. it. And sometimes, sometimes you can. can. And sometimes it's just trying to be that tip of the balance of something. <laughs> And occasionally, and occasionally you're, you're in the, the right place, place at the right time to either affect the outcome, outcome or witness the events. events. Mm -hmm. you, you just, just don't, don't want to be, be the event. <laughs> don't be the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay, because Dimitri's there, he's always the solution. No. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so I'm going to... Uh, he's always got the solution. So, so I was going to finish up the recording there, guys, unless you wanted to add anything else. All good? Uh, no. And possible war games this weekend if people are interested. So just let me know. Okay, people. Depending on whether I'm still off this call. I can understand that. Okay, so I'm going to go to end credits, and thank you guys for playing. Oh, thank you. And I'll see you at next game. Thank you, Akshara. Good to meet you, Lizzie. Good to meet you, too. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Yes. See ya. Bye, guys. Bye.